regular meeting of the Mid Coast Community Council. Uh, Scott, would you call the roll, please? John Craig? Oops, I'm here. Uh, Claire? Here. Dan? Here. I'm here. Gus? Here. Okay. All accounted for. Okay. Okay. Um, as a last minute change, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the shooting and tragedy that occurred in Half Moon Bay. And I'm going to recommend that we take a moment of silence in support and recognition of the suffering that people have recently experienced. And while we're doing that, I'm going to share some material. So bear with me while we have a moment of silence for the victims and the families of the shooting in Half Moon Bay. Thank you. Um, the slides I'm showing are from a presentation I researched back 10 years ago after Sandy Hook for my church. And I'm convinced if I updated the data from 2013, nothing would have changed. You can see that the overwhelming factor, or at least among OPEC nations, is that firearms are so much more prevalent in our society, and that correlates strongly with the deaths. Okay, um, the first thing is to have reports from the Board of Supervisors and other government officials. Uh, Ray, you're there. Ray Mueller? Yeah, I'm here, I apologize. So, um, and I, I apologize to everyone for keeping my camera off tonight. I'm. I'm uh, working a lot of different phones and computers right now and it'll be distracting for you all to have to watch that but i did want to i did want to let you know exactly uh, what the county has been doing in response uh and follow up on some items so uh first off in response to uh the shootings uh, as folks may or may not know we did open a shelter the county opened a shelter the evening of the shootings uh, Wharf, which was a family reunification center and a place to bring all the workers who were at the two sites of the shooting. Uh, they were um, there until late into the evening uh, as the coroner uh, was identifying bodies uh, to make sure that we had counselors with people as they received news of whether or not they loved, they lost loved ones. The county then put uh, the, the, these families uh, into hotel rooms where they are now with vouchers uh, because these work sites have been closed uh, where they were living uh, during pending the police investigation. Since that time period, uh, there have been some disturbing uh, concerning details regarding those work sites, which I've uh, encouraged uh, both county and state officials to follow up and in investigating and uh, today the district attorney announced indeed he is going to be conducting an investigation of those work sites. Um, but, and then at that, uh, concurrently to that, what we did was the county provided each of the 17 families uh, yesterday with $1,000 each uh, to start with as aid uh, and has mobilized it and will be mobilizing on Monday's Board of Supervisors meeting more aid to be provided to them. At the same time, what we're doing is we're creating basically wraparound resources for them where we're providing them uh, with each family with their own social worker, financial help, housing, uh, shelter, obviously food, uh, clothing for the short run, and then legal aid is necessary 
and mental health. And we're just going to be coordinating uh, basically wraparound supportive services for these families for the time being as we figure out a long-term plan. There is some flux right now to, to try to determine whether or not those job sites, uh, when, when they'll be opening again. Today they were released to be open, but we're not sure if the employer, what's going on with uh, the employer there, will they be bringing them back? And I also say, while we've heard concerning details, I wanna be careful to, be, to, to let you all, we're not slandering these folks. We're just off in, in prudence following up on information to try to determine uh, what's been happening at these job sites. So that investigation will take place and uh, to determine whether or not there is an issue. Um, separate from all of this, and while this is all important, well, also if anyone has a donation that they want to make, while the county is providing aid, Alice has also started a half moon based strong fund. That fund is being provided both to the Chinese families as well as the Latino families, which some people may have may be concerned about whether whether it was only uh, only one ethnicity of back, background. That is not the case. Alice serves and did serve the Chinese workers at these sites for the last three years, and so donations will be going to all of the families uh, given to Alice. Um, separate from that different topic to report out on the county continues its work, uh, following up on the storms, uh, and the damage caused by the storms. Uh, we did in fact, and I think you all saw the survey that went out via SMC alert and email to try to go ahead and assess storm damage, uh, throughout the unincorporated areas of San Mateo County at the same time that damage assessment has been taking place uh, from the cities. Uh, I can tell you, I personally followed up with FEMA uh, and with a Cal OES. Um, FEMA is presently in San Mateo County and has been for the last couple of days performing jobs, uh, before, not job site, performing damage site evaluations and working on that assessment. Uh, to see if we meet the threshold to be added. Uh, and so that is something that while all of this other, other uh, has been taking place uh, related to the shootings, uh, a separate unit has continued its work in San Mateo County following up on those storms to make sure that we can try to get into the basket of individual aid, uh, which we would very much like to do so. Um, uh, if there are any other questions about work, I can tell you the CRISP uh, project, uh, Coastal Resiliency uh, Infrastructure uh, Strategic Plan, uh, is uh, we RCD has agreed. Uh, I just spoke with Calix to participate in that, though they're going to provide their projects to it. I think the last time I was with you, I shared with you that One Shorelines can, is creating that GIS. Very excited about that. A new development that you should know is uh, met with FireSafe and uh, also stoked with re re to uh, representatives of Cal Fire and uh, as well as our county DEM. They are building a separate GIS map uh, where we will be putting in all of the fire mitigation projects that are taking place. We'll attempt to do that and capture that across jurisdictions. The reason why that is important and something that I think people will be excited about is that there was new legislation that was passed last year uh, that the uh, insurance commissioner pushed for that creates a process by which people can uh, have their fire, who have had their fire insurance canceled, uh, regain it. And that includes home hardening and mitigations uh, that the county would be doing and also a uh, defensible space around those homes. It is our intention to be uh, working in order to help get people reinsured. And so very excited about that program and I'm engaged in that. And that's why we're, we're creating that GIS so we can go ahead and have a very real discussion about what work needs to be done in order to have that happen for homeowners. The CRIS project will be discussed. The Resilient Infrastructure Strategic Plan will be discussed on, I believe it's February 2nd. Everyone's invited to uh, a bruise and views at a half, uh, uh, half I, I'm- Maverick's House. Sorry. Maverick's Thank House. You. Yeah, Lenny's, uh, Lenny's been kind enough to host us. 
I will tell you that uh, I've spoken with the county manager. Uh, we will be bringing in uh, Verizon and we will be, be, be bringing in Comcast to have a very frank discussion about uh, connectivity on the coast and what needs to be done there and what we will be, and that will, if they do not do this voluntarily, what, what the county plans to do in response to that. So there is a lot of moving pieces, uh, but we are advancing on all of them. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Before we do that, Ray, I just want to note that uh, I made a couple of last minute changes to the MCC website for the agenda post this morning. And the link to the Half Moon Bay Strong Fund, which you mentioned managed by Alice for the donations to the uh, those suffering from the uh, violence, that link is on our webpage, as is a link to the storm impact survey that you had uh, the county send out. So people can click on the links on the agenda post on the MCC website and donate or take the survey. Um, for questions, I'd like to go to the council first. Dan, you had a question for the supervisor. And you're muted. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ray, for your report. And uh, oh my God, you know, uh, <laughs> um, wow, you, you really kind of landed in on this uh, kind of very um, troubling time uh, with all the stuff that's happened in the last uh, you know, few weeks. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for your report. Uh, can I follow up on? Um, you know, I, I appreciate your uh, work towards the damage assessment. Um, just follow up on 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 the on just specifically the trees. Um, I, you know, after a few of these storms, I, I I drove around, took some pictures, and I I looked at a lot of the the. Uh, trunks that were laying on the ground, the roots that were sticking out of the ground. And, um, you know, it just made me think that uh, now's a good time for, um, you know, the county and arborist to um, come out and kind of make an assessment. Uh, I did get, I finally got your message. Um, sorry, the phone connectivity has been horrible, but uh, I don't know what happened there. But anyway, I did hear your message and, um, do you have anything to update as far as when um, this could take place? I'd be very happy to uh, speak with the uh, arborist just to let him know what I saw, and that might be helpful for him. Um, I have seen some trees still leaning, and some trees that you know appear to have some rot already. So um, I, I want to tell everybody I love trees, but if it comes to a point where there's some signal of of uh, you know, uh, danger, then, then we, sh we probably should take care of it as soon as all possible. Yeah, Dan, I'm, I apologize. I don't have that, that information for you tonight, but I will follow up with it tomorrow and try to get that to you. And I also, uh, Just send, send it to me. Okay. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and what I will share with you all too, I forgot to add to, send it to both of us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I will. What I, what I will tell you, uh, uh, and I, just and I appreciate it, Dan, very much, and I will. Uh, and if and then, uh, I just wanted to add one last thing I didn't report on with respect to the 92. Uh, what we had been advocating for with respect to the two way lane indeed happened. They moved the median, and there's a two way lane allowing free flowing traffic going back and forth. Uh, as you may know, the Crystal Springs portion closed. We had been asking for them to reinforce that prior to that happening, um, but uh, it managed to erode so badly they had to close it. But at least the work's being conducted there. So we're getting we're we'll, we're working hard to get the 92 done, and we still continue to meet with them on an ongoing basis to push that work. And I'm sorry, Dan, I I raised that just because I forgot to share it with the, share it with everyone. It, I hope it, it's not to undermine at all what we were talking about with the trees. I will definitely follow up on that and get information back uh, to you and Greg on it. Okay, I'll be looking for that. Thank you. Sid Young. You Ray, I, I really sympathize. You've really had a baptism here with all the different events, the storms, the shooting, and, you know, then you must be tired. That's all I can say. Um, I guess I want to follow up with a couple questions that came up in the news. And, and 
Well, first of all, on the tree issue, I did bring it up last week, but um, we still, I, I mentioned it at the Coastside Fire Protection District too. And they said that there were, that was a county deal that they had originally just participated in briefly about what kind of trees should be on that permit waiver. Um, and Monterey Cypress are the ones that seem to have tipped over or fallen quite a bit this last storm. So if you could check with planning and see if, if they're willing to extend the tree permit thing that would be great. The, they waived the fee for unincorporated. Um, but anyway, back to the shooting. Um, the governor mentioned that some of those people are only getting $9 an hour. And I don't know, I kind of question if that's true. But if you know anything, that would be interesting to hear. And are they really living in shipping containers? That was another thing that was so disheartening to hear. Um, and I don't know if you happen to know or if you're going to be able to bring it up at some future meeting, but um, maybe we could put that on an agenda down the road as far as finding out what kind of conditions there are for farm worker housing. And um, I did ask at the fire board meeting tonight at four if ag agricultural businesses are inspected annually. And Chief Cox did say that they only really were inspecting the warehouses in Princeton per Don Horsley because there were people living in the warehouses and they're really not zoned for that. But um, I was wondering if the county is inspecting other businesses and or do they just look the other way when it comes to farm workers sub substandard housing? It's really a concern of mine. Um, but uh, one other thing, and that is that um, I don't think we have a Coastside Parks Commissioner anymore. He was termed out when Horsley left. And um, I don't know if you've appointed anyone, but there was no one um, on the January meeting. And I think Lisa Ketchum was appointed by um, Don Horsley for the Planning Commission too, and she would be willing to serve again. So I, I hope you'll find somebody to represent us on those two commissions when you get a chance. And I know you've had a whirlwind of a time so far, and I thank your hard work. Thank you. Uh, okay. So on the uh, the coasts and coasts, coasts uh, parks commission, the plant commission, those uh, whoever uh, runs those commissions hasn't reached out to me yet, but I'll follow up with them to find out about the appointments. With respect to uh, the conditions of farm workers, I don't know what what people were instructed to do in the past. Uh, what I can tell you is I sat down today with the county manager and we are putting together a plan uh, upon, uh, on, on how we're gonna be surveying the conditions of farm worker housing on the coast and uh, how we'll be uh, moving forward to improve the conditions of farm workers on the coast and, and make ensuring that we have a safe uh, housing for farm workers on the coast. With respect to the conditions at this site, um, I have, as I've indicated, requested that there be an investigation and the district attorney has indicated that they will be investigating it. Uh, I um, have not personally seen these sites and because it's the subject of a criminal investigation, don't want to be putting out any information uh, upon which could implicate a potential witness and with, uh, with a description that they may or may not said or affect that in any way. One of the things we want to make sure that we do right now is keep all of, the, all of these things in San Mateo County. And as the district attorney alluded to today, but what I can tell you is that uh, following up forthright on all information that's been provided to me, I agree the information that the governor referenced yesterday uh, and I was with them, by the way, most of the day yesterday uh, was concerning, um, uh, but I, I, I have to act uh, prudently with respect to these ongoing investigations. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, we have Jane, is that Jane Praysilver? Can you unmute yourself, Jane? You wanted to, you wanted to ask a question?
Okay, well, um, there's no question there. So um, I think at this point we'll stop, thank Ray for his time um, and move on to the next uh, organization, which would be Harvey Rarbeck from Happen Bay. Uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, on a, a non-catastrophic issue, uh, the Superior Court of San Mateo ruled uh, against the Coastal Commission and for the Casamira uh, apartments in terms of allowing them to build a seawall, which the uh, Coastal Commission had denied. And that Casamira development is right on the border with the Midcoast, so I thought that would be of, of some interest to uh, Midcoast people. Uh, Can you tell us where that is? Where is that exactly? Um, you know, it's just uh, uh, south of the, the bridge, the uh, Maradas. Oh, bridge. okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, in terms of the horrible uh, shooting, which, which happened on Monday, uh, we're grateful to the county. We're grateful to Alice, Coastside Hope, uh, for all the support they've given the, the, uh, the community that has been so seriously affected. Uh, if you want to uh, show your support, we're going to have a, a vigil on Friday at five o'clock at Maktutra Plaza. Um, that should be uh, attended by a lot of people. We're gonna be closing off Kelly and Main Street. And then next Tuesday at four o'clock uh, in the uh, Boys and Girls Club slash Community Center slash uh, well, you know the, that big building that's right next to the uh, Cunha Middle School. Uh, we're going to have an interfaith uh, meeting uh, that will be, um, uh, should be attended by a lot of folks. Uh, there's probably going to be a, a dinner at the IDS Hall afterwards. Uh, that's open to the public. So that is a couple of chances for people to uh, come and, and, and grieve with the community, which uh, is grieving. Uh, that's all I got. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Sid, you have a question for Harvey? Hi, Harvey. Um, Hello, Sid. <laughs> I was um, wondering there, I heard something about uh, Half Moon Bay was thinking of relocate or find working with the county to uh, find a location for the vehicle dwellers. We're thinking of Princeton. Can you shed any light on that for us? Uh, you're talking about uh, the uh, uh, parking, uh, is that what? Safe, uh, safe parking for vehicle dwellers yes, following right. that incident at yes. Smith Field. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not directly related to that. Uh, it's something we've had in, in the works for a while. We're working with the county uh, to set up a, uh, a site. Uh, uh, the, uh, we hope uh, that's been based in uh, uh, East Palo Alto is uh the model on which we're we're working they they have a very successful safe parking program uh we haven't identified a site we uh, uh don't know whether it's going to be uh in the unincorporated area or in the city that that hasn't been uh determined yet but the, the idea of this is not just safe parking but to try to transition the people who live in their vehicles to get permanent supportive housing. So it's uh, it's an ambitious program, been very successful in East Palo Alto, and we hope to have a, a equally successful program uh, in the near future. Would it be uh, similar to the one they have in um, Pacifica for the, uh, um, our, what do they call them, oversized vehicle parking permits? No, it, it's a little different. Um, it's uh, 
uh, a safe parking program where there will be a, a monitor uh, 24 hours a day. There will be access to uh, uh, supportive uh, services. Uh, try to get the people who live in their vehicles out of their vehicles so that they can uh, have uh, permanent housing. So, Harvey, I would like to just wrap that issue up by saying you know it's a focus of interest from Claire and myself. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we look we look forward to more details in that dialogue. Now, is that Jane Prey Silver? Is that the Jane who I couldn't? Jane, do you have a question for Harvey? Or is this, does this belong under public comment? You're muted. I have uh, a couple comments for Ray. Is he still here? I'm here, yeah. Oh, great. Just a, a couple comments. Um, I'm not really asking for feedback, but just kind of um, uh, an awareness comment. One is that, you know, there's been quite a bit of complaints about not enough police policing on the coast side. And I know we had an incident about a year ago where there were quite a few people in Quarry Park. I don't know if the lack of police affected what happened um, during the shooting, but but I would like if if uh, an examination is done, if that could be included, uh, if there were enough police on the coast side to respond. Um, I, I heard about the shooting from an email from someone who uh, had a had a uh, listened to the police radio, and I didn't really get a timely alert. So I was just emailing friends. I think this is happening. So that was the other part of it is just getting alerts in a timely manner. Um, they may have had a reason not to send it. I don't know. Maybe they don't want to panic people. My second comment is just about the trees. Uh, my request is if you get an arborist out to look at the trees, if they could also have someone there who understands the wind and the erosion. Deer Creek held up wonderfully during this flooding time because there were so many trees. It's, it was very strong and healthy and was able to, to handle the water, which it's really important because the land flattens out into the homes at the bottom part. So I think that keeping the trees is, is when we can, when they're healthy, is important. And then my last comment, Ray, I'm sorry I'm over overloading you on this. Um, Lenny Roberts sent out a little email saying that there is a movement to potentially uh, close Reed Hillview and turn it into a park, which I think is a wonderful idea. But just if we could keep our ear to the ground or you could about uh, any any impacts that might have on um, how many more planes would be coming out of our small airport. I think our small airport is really important for emergencies, but we certainly can't handle all of the private uh, pilots. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry. So fix. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I appreciate it. And I feel compelled in all transparency to remark on the safe parking site. Um, and so um, I, I came into, I'll tell you, before I was sworn into office, I discovered uh, the issue surrounding the uh, safe parking site and some things that Don, had, uh, my prior supervisor, had put in motion before I got there and quickly alerted uh, the county that uh, before the site proceeded anywhere, I wanted them to do a survey of where all the RVs were because I, I recognized the fact that for a site to be put in the unincorporated uh, for Half Moon Bay, uh, if it were a Half Moon Bay project, could potentially uh, cause people to be upset if the RVs weren't located anywhere in the unincorporated. And so I really, uh, so I we have started, I was told that I would be provided that survey. One of my staff members went out today actually and looked at sites uh, where they said that cars have been parking uh, with people living in them. Uh, they are going to provide me an assessment of that. I'm going to go out and take a look at that as well. It was an incomplete uh, survey today uh, because it only included portions of the unincorporated and not Half Moon Bay as well. So we're going to ask them to take us to places to Half Moon Bay and also south of Half Moon Bay. So that project, I have been told uh, by HSA, is on hold until the survey is done. And until we've been able to look at uh, where the site makes the most sense based on where all of the RVs are. Uh, at the time that the survey is done, and I'm able to say to you all, okay, this is where the RVs are. I'm going to come back and talk to everyone about uh, where a safe site makes sense to be or multiple site, safe sites make sense to be on the coast. If we have people living similar to uh, what was, what's been alleged at the uh, 
at the nursery, uh, I'm sorry, at the farm in unsafe conditions. But uh, one thing I can promise you is it will be transparent. You will be able to see all of that and we'll be able to have a discussion about that with the community beforehand. And that's my commitment to you. Uh, if people are living in unsafe conditions, though, I have it's incumbent upon me to try to figure out a way to bring humanity to that. So, um, and that is what I have for you there. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Claire, uh, you have your hand raised. Uh, is that for Ray or for Harvey? Um, for both, actually. Um, I'm just adding on to what Ray's just saying. Uh, and filling people in, this is council activity, I guess. Um, I have, as both Ray and Harvey know, I've been concerned that uh, this project was a Half Moon Bay project and it was proceeding on uh, mid coast land without any input from us. And uh, that has been clarified uh, as I understand it now. This is a joint city county project with a consulting. Um, organization that they're using to plan it. And uh, it appears that we were not consulted. We were supposed to have been included. And uh, I think the people that didn't include us was the, was the county. And um, I'm assuming that that will change. Well, that we yeah. uh, out of this. Uh, well I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what happened in the past before I got here, Claire, but what I can tell you is I want to be fully transparent with you all about what has happened since I took office. And once I get the information as to where these RVs are located, I'll come back to you. I've also asked for up for as many sites as possible that we can go ahead and consider. And we will have a conversation about it before it happens. You will be part of the process. Okay. So that, I, that's that, solves, yeah. That solves my, my immediate concern about this. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and I'm waiting to see what happens. Okay. We're happy to help. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, and I understand the sensitivities around it and we're, it will happen. So I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Ray. So, uh, so the, uh, the next person I see who might be speaking under uh, government reports would be Chris one from the Coastside Chamber of Commerce. Chris one, do you have something you want to announce? Oh, thank you. Um, the State of the Coast side was supposed to be today, but um, it was not really appropriate to have it. Um, so we are going to reschedule it, hopefully um, for two weeks from now. Uh, but I do want to check with all our speakers because we don't want to lose any. And hopefully we could add some. Um, but our hearts and minds are just with everybody during this time. And we appreciate everybody who sent our post with links to the two farm worker funds. Um, it's been shared almost 400 times from our community members. And I'm just so appreciative of everybody who amplified that message. And Crystal, and I took your link and put it on our website, just so you know. Oh, thank you. So I uh, just couldn't be more appreciative. Do we have any other government officials wishing to make reports to the council today. Seeing none, I would like to open the public comment portion of the agenda. Do we have members of the public wishing to speak? Sid Young. Um, Greg, as you know, I turned in my application to fill one of the vacancies on the MCC. And um, I know there's some kind of a hang up with their, the county council as to whether or not they can allow the two vacancies to be filled immediately or not. So if you could give us a update on that, it would be great. Thank you. I can't give you an update precisely on timing. I will say an additional complication that has arisen, uh, Ray partially addressed. We found a number of candidates who are interested, but some of them have concerns about the in person attendance requirement okay, due to health concerns among their family members. So that is one more thing that uh, we're hoping to get clarified. Um, Ray didn't speak to it right now, and I think he might have left. But what he told me is that um, Calgi and the Board of Supervisors are going to be um, writing a document along with County Council to try and address this. 
And as soon as we know what they're going to do about the in-person attendance requirement, then I can finalize the list of candidates. I will say I thank the members of the public who have expressed interest. Uh, there are more than I had expected previously. Um, but said I, among the things we have to decide is, are we going to be required to meet in person? And that will, if we do, that that's going to cancel some of the people who are interested. Um, it's important. So I'm glad you're taking your time. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't mean to be taking my time. I mean to be getting going and having a retreat and uh, getting things done. But um, unfortunately, that's where we are. Um, any other members of the public? with a public comment. Amazingly, hearing none, I will jump right on this opportunity to move to the consent agenda. Um, the minutes for the meeting on January 18th were posted and then revised due to some feedback uh, by knowledgeable um, residents. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as posted? Motion to approve. Second. Do I have a second? Okay. Scott, would you do your duty? You got it. Uh, Greg? Yes. Claire? That's a yes. Okay, Dan? Yes. Me, yes. And Gus? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, I am pleased to say that we are far ahead of the schedule I expected us to be on. And Jim Pruitt uh, it, of the uh, Harbor District is already somewhere around here. I know he's in here. And I made Jim a co-host. Jim, can you still hear us? And uh, do you want to take over and share your screen and go into the presentation you had prepared on the San Mateo County Harbor District update? I am, I am here, Greg, and I can hear you loud and clear. And it's great to see the group that's assembled for this meeting. So I'm very happy to give this presentation about the Harbor District. Um, I will try to do the share screen and make sure the right one pops up. If you see my email, let me know. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Jim Pruitt. I am the general manager for the San Mateo County Harbor District. And I've been here just a little over three years as the general manager. And I was asked to make this presentation to the board or the council, and I'm happy to do so. Now, if I can get the screen to go. There we go. So at the San Mateo County Harbor District, under the guidance and leadership of our board, uh, we've been working on the Johnson Pier expansion project, the Surfers Beach replenishment project, the Surfers Beach Restroom, RV Restroom and Green Space Project, expanding the coastal trail from the launch ramp sidewalk to Johnson Pier, Tenant Row ADA Restroom Project, resurfacing of parking lot C1, 2, 3, and of uh, the launch ramp road, the replacement of launch ramp, the launch ramp restroom and boat washing stations, a new Pillar Point Retail Center, and then the West Trail. And I'll start with the uh, expansion project with Johnson Pier. The project will add about 15,000 square feet. And as you can see in that picture, uh, it also extends the pier out. So it widens it at the terminus and extends it out. It also will uh, replace uh, the new put and put in a new fuel pier. It will add a working dock so vessels can tie up on the working dock. And also the working dock will include uh, free sewage pump out and bilge pump out facilities. Uh, replacement of all the floating docks there on Johnson Pier, not A, B, and C, but uh, over on Johnson Pier. And to include uh, extending those docks, adding additional berths. Pillar Point Harbor usually runs between 95 and 100% occupancy rate for their berths. So we'll have no problems filling those berths with, uh, with boaters. This is a picture of Johnson Pier as it exists today. You'll notice that the 
crab pots kind of blocked away, so do the, the totes. And now imagine six uh, forklifts operating through there and piles of ice and getting the squid, salmon, and crab to market. It's a very tight and it's become a dangerous place out there. We've instituted a Johnson Pier safety plan that has improved the safety, but the ultimate safety plan would be to uh, widen and expand the pier so there was plenty of room for everybody to operate safely. This is what we envision uh, when we do expand the pier. So double the width of the terminus and also extend it out where trucks are right now, as you know, back down the pier with all the people on the dock or the pier. And now they'll be able to drive down to the end of the pier and turn around. A much safer operation for the forklifts, the operators and the truck drivers and public. Here's another picture of the same area. You'll see the fish buying building has three different doors on it. And right now the, uh, the pier only covers uh, two of the doors and not three. So once it's expanded, it'll be wide enough to cover the entire building. We're looking uh, forward to it. The, the dock that accomplished this is, the cost is $51 million. $2 million has been spent thus far in design engineering and permitting. And we're at about the 95% phase of completing all the design and engineer and permitting. We will need to identify the additional uh, $49,000 to actually build a project. And that's one of my for, uh, top goals for this year. The second project, another picture. Another project that we're extremely proud of and look forward to is the Surfers Beach Pilot Replenishment Project. It accomplishes three significant uh, projects within it. It started out with dredging the harbor and removing all the sand that washes over the breakwater and causes uh, uh, minimal deaths for the vessels to navigate. It also establishes new eelgrass beds out by the breakwater near Mavericks Beach, creating new fish habitat. And then it also replenishes Surfers Beach, which will give an additional beachfront for tourists and for locals to uh, enjoy the beach. It will also protect the coastal trail, Highway 1, the bluffs. And as the sand migrates south, it will also begin to start protecting areas south of uh, Surfers Beach. This project's fully funded and we're on schedule to begin this project in the spring of this year. Uh, the long-term solution the district is looking into and considering is the possibility of having a full-time dredge uh, at the harbor and we will operate that dredge to uh, move the sand around that's washed into the harbor and place that clean sand, sand on Surfers Beach, which will continue to protect the coast, and then also put it on the beach in front of Princeton by the sea, creating a natural barrier between the ocean and uh, Princeton by the sea, again, uh, taking sea level rise into consideration, and then finally continuing putting sand back on the West Trail so it's protected. Uh, from ocean rise and land storms. So we're very excited about it. Project locations, as we discussed, uh, out towards Mavericks, that's where the new uh, eelgrass beds will go in for fish habitat. And then the circle to the right, the larger one is where we'll take a lot of the sand and place it over onto uh, Surfers Beach, filling in that beach again. Another project we're extremely proud of is the uh, Surfers Beach Replenishment Project. Or excuse me, Surfers Beach Restroom and Green Space Project. And that project is, again, fully funded. And if you drive by that area, you'll notice that the construction fence is already going up. This project is exciting for us because 
It'll provide new restrooms and replace those outhouses that are there now. It will provide outdoor show showers for the servers, bike storage for the surfers and for people wanting to walk the trail. It will provide ADA waterfront parking so that the uh, ADA cars are, will be able to park right on the uh, ocean's edge, which I think is the only place where they'll be able to do that in, in this area. It will also provide ADA access to the coastal trail from the parking area to the trail will be, uh, again, set up for ADA access. Public gatherings, classes, uh, we're putting in additional benches so people can sit and watch the, the waves and enjoy the coast. It improves the coastal trail throughout there, widening it and trying to make it a little bit straighter, uh, provides EV charging stations. And again, we broke ground just last week and fully funded. Here's a picture of kind of what it will look like. This is after several public meetings and uh, back and forth with the uh, architects. You'll notice the outdoor shower, showers, the grassy area. Based on public input, the trees are no longer going to be planted there. And then you see the wider path and additional benches. The next project we're working on in close partnership with Ocean Ciders LLC is uh, extending the path uh, along Pillar Point Boulevard from the sidewalk coming over the boat ramp, which is concrete, to the parking lot over in the harbor. We all know as we walk that path and leaving the concrete surface, it's an unimproved path, uh, unpaved, lots, there's holes in it, gophers attack it. Uh, and it's not ADA compliant. So we're hope we're actively working that project now, again, with the support and partnership with Ocean Ciders LLC. Tenant Row Catch Joanne ADA Restroom. This project is also fully funded and at a, will be completed this spring. It is already underway. The current structures, again, it's old, fixtures leak, uh, and it's not ADA, our shower shouldn't be there, but it's not fully compliant with the ADA rules, the current uh, restrooms. Uh, it's built as a separate building, and the expected completion date again is 2023. The next project we're working on, and the contract has been let already, is the resurfacing of parking lots C1, C2, and C3, and the asphalt road, uh, Pillar Point Harbor Boulevard from the junction of Pillar Point Boulevard, Johnson Pier Boulevard and Pillar Point Boulevard, all the way down to the launch ramp. It is highly de deteriorated based on all the salt water uh, damage to those roads and to those parking lots. And speaking of the launch ramp, we're in, we're starting to put out requests for proposals on the Pillar Point Launch Ramp restroom boat wash replacement. The current structure is old. It has no showers and fixtures leak. The showers is an important part because a lot of people come off the beach and they're covered in sand. And right now they're using the sinks and rinsing off. And then all that sand clogs the drains. So we have to shovel the sand and clear the drains on a regular basis. They also wash off their equipment and their toys. The new structure, again, we'll have a new building envelope. It'll have outdoor showers, new fixtures and plumbing. And the replacement of this building is truly being driven by a requirement of the water board and the TMDL program in which we're operating under. The boat wash stations, right now, we only have two. The water is not recycled from the boat washing stations. It does not meet the need of the number of boats that need to be washed. The boaters don't want to wait, and then they leave without washing, and then all that salt water goes on the roads and then damaging the roads. The new boat washing station, again, will double the number of stations. It'll be convenient. 
it will recycle the water like a car wash, uh, reduce salt on the water, salt on roadways, and again, it will also help out with the TMDL program. New retail center, uh, Pillar Point Harbor. The current retail center, again, built in the 1960s. We've all been in it. There's no heat or air. Uh, heating's provided by log or wood stoves, which is burnt on spare the air days. Poor plumbing, which is resulting in fats, oil, and grease entering the sewage system. Poor electrical, and it's small and outdated. The picture on the right was one option provided to the public at a public meeting in December of a place where a building can go, a new building can go. And that's right over the existing bathrooms uh, opposite the uh, Harbor Master's office. There we go. And it's just one option. We, The final option has not been decided yet. But it is the new retail again will improve views, increase square footage, improve the plumbing, ADA access, electrical, as we talked about earlier, plumbing, new HVAC system. It will be built to sea level rise conditions. Uh, the district has already hired an architect to do the design, engineering, and permitting. Uh, we do not have the funds to build it. So the district will have to identify funds before the building can be built. This is just at the beginning stage and we'll be seeking, seeking as much public comment as we can uh, in support of this building and what they would like to see in the building. The building will be built to the design and character of Half Moon Bay and Pillar Point Harbor. So we won't lose that flavor of the harbor. It will not be a modern glass building. And Point Loba is just an example. As you can see, it's kind of built up on steps that they turned into seats and for watching the water, uh, but the building itself is raised up above the sea level rise issues. And finally, I want to talk about is the West uh, Trail Project. That picture we're looking at right now is prior to our project. And you can tell uh, the Beach or the trail has, uh, and the bluff there has been significantly eroded, endangering the trail. And the trail itself was got down to, but between two and three feet wide at, at the worst, and it continued to erode. So we developed a project with a lot of uh, public input that changed the initial design to a new design, and we built a living shoreline, and that's what the project looked like when it was completed with the beach and uh, a lot of underground work to ensure that the rocks and the beach stay where they're at. And you'll also notice the, tr the, the trails that are marked by a rope fencing system, just directing people where to walk. Thank you, excuse me. In those open areas in between a walking pass, we'll be planting native plants starting on January 30th. And then we'll be evaluating uh, the whole project for a few years to see if it truly is uh, a solution. These past storms, there's the West Trail today. Um, it's the plan worked. The rocks and the sand stayed where it was supposed to. And you can see on the right-hand picture that uh, the trails are fine and are, uh, standing up as designed, and there's an overlook of the new trail, uh, which is again compacted down and ADA compliant. <laughs> this is a washout that occurred during the storm on the west side of the project, on the very border of the project. Mm -hmm. Water came down from the hillside and started a ravine and a washout. So we had a washout there <clears throat> that needs to be repaired. We're, we have already engaged the engineers and architects on a solution, and a new solution will be put in place in the near future that will redirect that water and save the trail and prevent that erosion uh, on the bluff there from water coming down off of the hill. <laughs> 
again, that project was is 99% complete and fully funded. And there's all the great uh, additions that we have with the new path. <laughs> you don't need a four wheel drive anymore to park in the parking lot. And then that is if you have any questions. Well, I, I can tell you that there are going to be a lot of questions. Um, let me just first say, Jim, I'm very impressed with the scope of the work. Um, and for members of the public who don't know, I, I met with Jim and his finance person May last year, and uh, he inherited quite a, a ball of wax uh, when he joined. Uh, and certainly the financial reporting and analysis has been uh, much improved. I, I will pick your brain later, Jim, about <laughs> some issues with financial analysis. I, I hope to learn some stuff from you that can pass on to others. Now, the process I want to follow here, and I took notes because this could be a little complicated, <clears throat> is that normally we have clarifying questions from the council, then public comment, and then following uh council comments and opinions on next steps and so forth. So what I would like to do is follow that process, but there's an open issue here in that uh, I know Dan Haggerty has a lot of things to bring up that won't fit into one three minute segment. So I want to ask the council, you know, Claire, Gus, what do you want to let, do you want to let Dan go first or do you want to ask your questions and then have, Dan, uninterrupted at the end, having some some pr private time to bring stuff up with Jim. What's your preference? Who are you asking? I'm asking Scott, Claire, Dan and going Gus. First. That's, that's fine okay. with me. Yeah, Dan Let's can go, go first. first. It's cool. Uh, I don't know. I was going to have Dan go last. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you can decide, Greg. Um, I think what. Dan is going to raise could be educational for those of us who haven't followed it as closely. So I'm going to suggest letting Dan go first, and then I'll go around the council, um, and we can build upon the comments he's made. Um, so, Jim, uh, batting down the hatches, here goes Dan Haggerty. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Uh, you know, hey, I want to, uh, you know, thank you for your reporting tonight, and I want to say, that, you know, I think you're doing a pretty damn good job. You know, I know you lot on your, you know, there's a lot involved more than just uh, community sees. Um, <clears throat> so what I wanted to uh, kind of kind of go over is, um, you know, mostly, mostly the bathroom project. Um, I've got some other concerns, but I want to kind of keep it short. Um, so, you know, I want to say that um, <clears throat> Regarding the design of the bathroom at the RV lot near Surfers Beach, uh, that they, they just recently closed the tra uh, detour the trail, um, I got it. I got some concerns with uh, the parking layout. I got concerns with the style of of uh, the bathroom. Um, I'm assuming that the height of the roof has been kept as low uh, as lowest possible. Um, I want to ask about the lighting, uh, the tree, the, uh, the tree behind the, uh, bathroom, which, you know, I mean, the bathroom is going to be blocking views. Also that tree, maybe that tree can be, uh, um, uh, concrete benches. I want to talk about. And, um, so let me just say, focus now on, on, on the parking. So, uh, Jim, I want you to know that I and many others, I've seen them there. We've had, we've enjoyed the ability over the year. I've been here for 35 years. Um, we've enjoyed the ability in foul weather and fine weather to be able to drive out into that lot, park, and view the ocean. Um, this project, this 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 parking uh, plan, you're taking that. Uh, <clears throat> the project is taking that away from me and many others to be able to uh, essentially, you know, view the ocean from the comfort of our, our vehicle. Uh, and I'm going to call this out 
as a direct violation of the principles of the California Coastal Act that was put in place to protect the fundamental views and access to the coastline for all. Um, I strongly believe this needs to be changed um, to have uh, some normal parking there also. It should not be 100% handicapped facing the ocean. Um, I don't want to bog down. Well, but Dan, why don't we pause there for a second and see if Jim has a reply to your concern? Very good. Before you go on to your next issue. All right, Jim, do you want to address that? The parking with the ADA uh, up front was was primarily driven by uh, other permitting agencies that permitted the project. But I can look into uh, the possibility of mixing the parking up a little bit more to allow for non-ADA cars to park up front. Okay, and, um, and I'll report back to Dan and Greg. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, the style, the, the it, it appears to be an ultra modern style. It from when I looked at the picture, um, or the rendering, it you know it, it appears to be like in an urban setting. There, there's no nautical. There's no. Um, there's. It just doesn't feel to me like a seaside. It just it doesn't blend in with the character of the of the area. Um, now, you know, that you know, I, um, kind of ties in with some of these concrete benches that look like they belong on um, the Embarcadero in San Francisco. Um, I, I think a minimal uh, thing, I'm happy to hear that the trees are not going to be uh, put there to block more views. Um, so <clears throat> as far as the style, I, I, I saw a sign uh, that's, I, I couldn't read the whole thing from the rendering. It might say Pillar Point Harbor on the, on the side of the bathroom, which <clears throat> I don't think is necessary to have that sign there. But uh, what, co um, <clears throat> what can be done around this um, to try to make the style uh, just kind of blend a little bit more into a, you know, a small seaside community? With the design of the building itself, uh, it's been at uh, public meetings and presented and changed uh, at board meetings and the board of, uh, of Harbor Commissioners uh, decided on this design uh, for that. And it'd be, it's too late in the project to totally redesign that building. I'm not asking to redesign the building completely, uh, but you know there could be some finishing touches that could be a bit more appropriate. I can look into that. So you want to hang, uh, you want to hang lobster trap floats and uh, life rafts and uh, and ropes like I have on my front uh, front uh, fence here. I'll, I'll take suggestions from anybody in the community. Yes, uh, you know okay. I'm open to hear other people. You know. Uh, it's opinions. Yeah, absolutely. I'll send I'll send Jim a picture of my front uh, front fence. I'm a fa I, I, I favor wooden benches. You know, um, those concrete benches, in my opinion, are horrible. And we'll hear from others. Um, and then the lighting. Uh, and I'm assuming <clears throat> that the height of the roof. That's probably going to be a difficult, but. Uh, I want to make sure that every opportunity, everything was taken to keep the height of the roof as low as possible. And it was. Okay. Um, can you comment the, the on- The key point here, Dan, just a second. The key point here, Jim, is this design has already gone through public comment and been finalized. Is that right? Correct. You know, they, they, didn't, they didn't listen to my comments. They, they ignored <laughs> my comments. Uh, the lighting, um, are we looking at, um, are we looking at International Dark Sky Association uh, a, a seal of approval, light fixtures? Yes, you gave us that flyer and I believe it is, but I'll double check for you. 
Okay. And, you know, to mitigate the, uh, the structure that is not there now, uh, there's, a, there's a tree there that is going to be dropping branches on the structure if it's not trimmed or removed. Can you comment on, on that, that tree that's going to be right next to the um, bathroom? I can't right now, but I can follow up. Okay. Um, I'll, I just want to go back to the, you know, the, the principles of the California Coastal Act to, to preserve that everybody that can look towards the ocean can actually see the ocean. Um, thank you, Jim. I, you know, I, uh, Greg, I, I want to, uh, just report on some, uh, you know, the, the, the temporary um, rerouting of the coastal tra uh, trail. Because I got, um, do you want me to do that now? It won't take much, but, or do you want how me to do that? How does that fit into Jim's presentation? Uh, sounds well, like that's a safety living. issue. We're talking about the, we're talking about the bathrooms. There's a clear safety issue right now, today. And I have a little bit of input that I would like to uh, um, share. All right, let me just clarify one thing. Jim, is this part of your purview, what, the, the area he's talking about? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Dan. All right, um, listen, uh, Jim, I, you know, I don't want to put anybody at blame or anything, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I came into that parking lot uh, this last Saturday, okay? I had no idea that the construction um, thing was was detoured. I, I had no idea. I drove in as if it was any day um, from the past. I made a left turn looking for a parking space, and all of a sudden I realized I was parked. I was right in the middle of the trail, and there was a bicyclist flying at high speed right towards my car. And, you know, it's like a deer in the headlight. I, am I going to turn right or left? I don't know which way they're going to, uh, they're going to turn. Um, <clears throat> since then, the next day I came, well, actually that same day, uh, by the way, there were, there were no barricades. There were no notices. There were no signs, nothing. I drove into that as if it was a regular day. Um, I stayed there. I had breakfast from Catch Joanne's. I, had, I watched some of the the waves. I hung out and I, I watched, you know, what was going on. And I realized there were some barricades, but they were leaning against the fence way out of the way. I drug them over and I placed them in, put them in place so that at least it alerts people coming in that they, there's something different now. Um I see that they're still there. I think they've been improved a little bit uh, with brighter cones because I couldn't, I didn't want to take any uh, more cones than necessary. Uh, but also, yes, on, on the next day I came, Saturday, and I'm, I'm standing, I'm watching a, uh, a, a driver come into the parking lot. She's looking left, moving forward, right into where these trees are and the, and the cyclists are flying in the other direction. So she's looking one way, moving forward while a cyclist is coming straight to her car. Uh, it's just, in my opinion, it's not an acceptable um, situation there as far as the detour. I'm going to recommend, uh, I'm sure other people will throw some suggestions out, but I'm going to recommend uh, try to, to consider um, rerouting that temporary trail a little bit closer to the fence to keep that um, that middle entrance and exit area away from, you know, I've also, you know, every once in a while you get a, a 10 speeder or something. I mean, they are at extremely high speed. It's really unsafe. So I, um, I'm happy to, you know, Jim, I've been wanting to give you a call. I've just been so busy. Um, but I, I do want to bring it to your okay, attention. Okay, Dan, Dan, is that is that your last concern for Jim? Um, other than you know, I uh, you know, I'm 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 very concerned with losing Catch Joanne, as Jim already knows. Um, I'm you know, I, I noticed that it kind of like favored 
whatever was uh, not uh, officially uh, approved or uh, agreed on, but um, clearly there's uh, um, a movement towards um, killing the existing uh, re uh, retail instead of uh, repairing the existing uh, retail uh, center. That's it, Greg. Thank you for uh, allowing me to put my um, concerns out. All right. Well, you're a very involved guy, Dan. Jim, Dan. on point of process, we have a transcript. I will send you a copy of the transcript so you don't have to have notes on every single thing. You can you can catch up. You with me? You can Understood. see it in writing. Dan, okay. I, what I can do is promise you that I will go down there with my operations manager and take a look at that tomorrow. Thank you, Jim. I know I know you're doing a great job, and you got a lot. You got a lot on your shoulder, and uh, you know nobody can catch everything. But I, I felt it was necessary to share what I learned. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Now to finish the council, let me ask members of the council who are not Dan if uh, we have any comments or questions to make. Gus, you can stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> How you got Blair, me laughing? <laughs> Blair, you had a question or comment? Yes, this is probably what you would call clarifying questions. Um, two of them. Uh, one, your 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 information about the restroom near the RV park. Is the RV park still going to be there? Yes. Why? They have a lease for that property and. They're just reducing their footprint by six uh, RV spaces okay. and losing the paid parking. I had heard some conjecture that when they uh, do the new RV park uh, on the corner there, that uh, this would no longer be in operation. That is not true. Uh, it's run by a private business and it's, it's a business decision for them. The district's unaware of any change. Okay, but they they their 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 lease is still in effect, and yes, will be for uh, at least twenty years, I think. I yeah. Think. yeah. The other question, I guess I'm just a little confused about the commercial buildings. You you said something about fixing the uh, uh, Kestrowan's bathrooms, and and then separately you you were talking about the new commercial building. Are you planning to demolish the the current building where Kestrowan is? That's all up for discussion still, but the, the bathroom is based on its pricing. We did not want to integrate it into an existing building that was uh, very old and small. So we built it outside where we can make more room and still allow the restaurant to have the tables inside. If we would have, if we would have put the bathroom inside, we would have taken up the entire uh, Catch Joanne Harbor Bar area which is not what we want, it's not what they wanted. So we put it outside for that major reason, but it also, it's separate from the building. If we do decide and that building does get demolished, the bathroom itself can remain there as a parking lot restroom. Okay, and the comments you made about the plumbing and the um, electricity and everything else in that building are just sort of incidental comments, you're not gonna do anything with those? or having having get re things repaired as we can but the plumbing underneath the building is extremely old uh we went through a process over the last three years of identifying all the um, non-wastewater or all the wastewater non-stormwater connections to the stormwater system and we cleaned out those pipes and now we're moving over to the sewage system we're finding similar issues uh, which which clogs our pumps and uh, Sam is not very appreciative of any uh, fats, oil, and greases that get past our system. Okay, thank you. Those are the things I didn't understand. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, next on the council, I see Scott. So I, I just wanted to give a ask a question and then let you know my practice as a surfer i surf there quite often and i drive my car there and i my practice is to drive and park on the east side of one as close to the light as possible so that i can use that 
um, to safely cross the road and you know and, and get to the steps. And if I'm going to surf at Surfers Beach, so I don't think I'll be using the showers, the new showers that are at the that are near the RV park. It it would just I, I'm just going to go back to my car as a surfer. I'm probably not going to use those showers. Um, so if you take away spots at that RV park, they're just going to park on the other side of the highway where the skate ramp is. And that seems just like free parking to me for RVs over there. And I, I don't know if that's going to change or they're going to stop allowing people to park their RVs on the other side of the highway um, from Surfers Beach. Um, uh, and uh, that's those are my two comments regarding the presentation. I thought everything else was awesome. I thought... The improvements are awesome, and um, the way the harbor is changing is great, and the path over to Mavericks is great, too. I, I've, I've been on that, and I, I thought that was really awesome. Thank you. Gus? Thanks. Uh, yeah, Jim, first, I just wanted to say I appreciated both the thoroughness and the efficiency with which you covered the ground that you did in this presentation. Um, it looks like you guys have done a lot of good work in a pretty short amount of time. Um, and then I also just kind of wanted to say going forward, it seems like there's a bunch of pretty heavy design related um, aspects to the work going forward. You know, the, the mentality that I bring to that is that wh whatever part of the human brain it is that processes design things, I, I don't have that. I have two left yeah. brains. So Neither uh, do I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't intrinsically care much exactly about in, in particular design details because I, I just have no way of deciding about them. Um, but uh, my, for me, it's more, do I feel like the community had a good chance to make whatever suggestions, give whatever feedback? Um, and so I would just ask that uh, it just help me. I would like to be, uh, I would like to amplify or promote um, the opportunities that the public has to weigh in on these on these things. I want to just get it out there in the community a little bit more. And then, you know, hopefully we, we won't have as many kind of after it's already said and done, people giving you a lot of feedback on uh, on design stuff. So uh, I just want to be a partner to you in, in helping sort of promote those those opportunities for the public to uh, to get engaged in the design stuff. Um, thanks. No, that's great. Uh, what we currently do now is we publish agendas as required. We also uh, put everything out on our social media with headlines about what we're doing and when the next meetings are. And then we also send it to our uh, agenda bank list so that they're aware of it also. And then people and uh, normal members of the public have emailed us and asked for them to be added to the email list and they get uh, noticed uh, individually by email. So we're doing the best we can to get it out there. Uh, the chamber helps us get things out there. Uh, the Coastside Buzz, we've also worked with them to get more information out. So when meetings are occurring, and I'm um, and I'll definitely share with uh, MCC when we're doing stuff and making sure that you get our agendas and our notices. Great. Thanks so much. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the MCC maybe missed the opportunity um, because we're not covering the bases as we should be. Uh, normally, we would have a retreat, make sure we've assigned somebody to cover the agendas for every one of the agencies we work with and be aware of these things before they happen. Uh, I know right now we're understaffed. We haven't had a retreat. I'm sure there's bases we're not covering. So uh, I think uh, to the council, it's incumbent on us to go through that list of the major relationships we're supposed to monitor and make sure we are doing it. Um, I believe that concludes the council's round of questions. I'd like to take uh, public comment questions uh, from people, for instance, like Lenny, who have not yet spoken today. Lenny, did you want to ask a question or make a comment to Jim? Oh, hi. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Hi, Jim. Um, I'm Lenny Schultz, an El Granada resident, and um, I'm wondering what is, I, I don't know how I missed uh, the planning of that park that you have out there. Um, at the RV lot. It looks like a quite an elaborate little plan there with a park and everything. Um, I went down there and looked at it, and I was hoping it would be a bit simpler, but um, I wasn't in on the planning, so I turned my head, and there it is. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping um, that the 
building is not uh, visible from the highway, you know, and the, that the restroom, because that's a really key point right there. It's a it's a, a view corridor that's gorgeous, and to have the restroom as a um, point, <laughs> it's just like oh god. Um, uh, we get a good view of the restroom, but I hope we don't get a good view of the restroom. So I'm wondering, how big is that restroom? How many square feet is that? I don't know the exact square feet, but again, uh, we, we did design it. So uh, we did our best not to interview or interfere with the view shed. Um, well, yes, I... Uh, but that's, I, but it will in some ways, but we did our best to limit that. Um, I wonder if it's too late now to uh, move that restroom down to the other side of where the present, um, um, what do they, you call those, the toilets that are up there now, the the um, the gray gray ones, the outhouses, whatever. The board of bodies. <laughs> yeah, the board of bodies. I was hoping that you would that uh, the restroom would be placed there because you could hardly see that from the highway and from you know as you walk down the down the streets of Granada and so forth. So, but as it is now, from what I can see, it looks like it's going to be like the highlight of that area, a restroom, which I'm really, it's kind of funny to me, but maybe it's not going to look that bad. But I really would like to know how big is that? We've gone hundreds of years without any rest, restroom at all. And now it looked like it was quite sizable, that, that um that restroom so where could i see a copy of that and the square footage of it and so forth i know it's probably too late now but that the would project be is on our website but i can send you some more detailed information that'd be you. good because you know everybody once the building is placed there <laughs> that's it <laughs> you can't do anything about it it's a big um, ice. It hopefully it won't be a big eyesore, and the Coastal Act um, scenic visual resources policies are for protection of these precious views we have. And so I'm really sensitive to anything that takes the remainder of our ocean view away. Right now, all of the front of El Granada, not all of it. I'm sorry, half of probably 50 percent of El Granada is lined with Monterey cypress trees. So we're completely blocked off from the ocean. That's a violation of the Coastal Act, but no one did anything about it at the time. Well, we talked about it, but they grew as we, you know, as we were turning our heads and living our lives. So anyway, what I'm saying is now there's little tiny spaces left for the public to see the ocean. And the restroom is going to take another bit of our view and i'm really sensitive to that i'm i just don't want to see that any more of our view taken away it's like half moon bay quarter moon bay eighth moon bay no moon bay and you know that that's what's happening to our our front el granada is the only town here that has that kind of a beautiful sweeping view and it's little by little it's going away there's the oversized hotel there and then there's the cypress tree solid wall and now there's the restroom that's going to take away half of the little corridor we have left and you know i'm i'm sorry to be sound like i'm ranting but really in the end um to take away any more of our view of the ocean and the white water view the surfers coming in Right now, we can see the surfers coming in, the white water, but it looks like that restroom is going to block that off, and little by little. So I, I was hoping you you could either mitigate by taking that gargantuous cypress tree out. Don't kill me, people. Um, but it might fall. One did fall from the RV lot, and it fell across the Highway 1 about maybe seven years ago, I saw it fall right across the highway from the RV lot. Right. Same Lenny, I have to allow, I have to allow okay. others to comment, but I, okay. I do get your point. And as a matter of fact, you might have a similar thing to say on the next agenda item. Uh, another person who hasn't yet been uh, allowed to speak today is Keith Mangold. Keith, did you have a comment here? Unmute, yeah. Uh, I think 
I've been a resident for 40 years and I've never seen a storm like we saw you know, over this last week where we've had such an enormous amount of sand dropped along the shores, along Surface Beach, on south, on down the coast. And um, we're looking at a potential sand enhancement program coming up in the not that distant future. And I think that this is a great opportunity to see what happens because, you know, there's more sand there than would be coming from the sand enhancement program. And uh, if it all goes away in another two months or something like that, we've got a pretty good idea of what would happen with the sand enhancement program. And uh, we might not want to pursue that. Um, and again, I don't, you know, this is just an observation. I'm seeing this and thinking, you know, basically mother nature has given us a pretty good view of the future relative to the sand enhancement program. And so we should take that opportunity and pay attention to it. And uh, if it sticks around for another year or whatever, that's great. If it doesn't, we should act appropriately. So that's it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Kimberly Williams, you haven't spoken yet. I'm recognizing you, Kimberly. Thank you, Greg. Um, so uh, thank you, Jim, for the presentation. Um, I have a couple of things. So I actually listened to that Harbor District meeting after it was over because I wasn't available when it was going on. And my understanding of, you know, the, the, the piece on the new buildings um, was that those options presented for the changes um, were presented as options for the public to know about and weigh in on, but a decision hadn't yet been taken and wasn't taken at that meeting. And at that meeting, you said that there would be another meeting once an option, a final option was agreed on to propose for the public to weigh in again. Is that not correct? I wasn't able to attend that meeting. I had a five minute emergency, but yes, we will be having another meeting. So there's still opportunities for the public to weigh in on which option they prefer. Yes, for, um, the, for the new tenant, new uh, commercial building, yes. Okay. And my understanding also is that that will need a CDP from the Coastal Commission, and it has an overlapping area with this, with San Mateo County's LCP. Um, so there will be decision opportunities for those entities as well. Yes. Um, so, so there's a little bit of a ways to get for the approval of those options. So yes. I, I will hold off on my comments for those then, um, because I think the timeline is going to be a little long for those. Um, my second thing is that, um, sorry, I'm just pulling up my notes. Um, I, I agree with Dan that I also have lighting concerns. Um, the lighting in the harbor, conti the pollution continues to increase. So I just want to, to say that that is also a concern of Surfrider. Um, and then the, the um, other thing I want to mention is with regard to the beach replenishment, um, I want to second what Keith Mangold said to pay attention to the sand deposition from the storms to see what that looks like um, over the next year, see if it sticks around. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's questions that still haven't been answered for me in that regard. So in terms of the dredging and, and beach replenishment, how long will the first replenishment of sand last? Do Those are all great questions. And that is part, that's why it's a pilot project. So we will be studying exactly what Keith was talking we about. know that. So what Keith said, would, what is the comment? I'm sorry. I didn't hear that last part. That is our plan. It's a, it's a pilot project and we are seeing if the re, of replenishing the beach and constructing that beach will result in the stand, sand staying. And if it does, uh, and it just needs replenishing on an annual basis, we can continue to put the sand on surface beach. One of the things that is known is that the breakwater does stop the sand flow from uh, north to south, and we need to work on continuing that sand flow from north to south for shoreline protection. And that's what this replenishment project is testing. 
Okay, thank you. I, I just, I have one thing to add to that. Um, sorry, this is a little lengthy, but um, with regard to that, there was a wonderful idea presented to consider from one shoreline a few meetings ago. And I think it deserves or merits further consideration and thought because the cost for beach replenishment over the long term, doing it over and over annually, could be significant. Um, and that that proposal, as I understand it, was to alter the outer breakwaters in such a fashion that the west, the breakwater that points west would be angled in to protect where the West Point Trail is and the and the outer harbor and that the eastern part of the breakwater, a good portion of it would be removed to allow sand to migrate around the harbor and down to Surfers Beach. I think that's that's that really warrants investigation uh, and looking into because that in the long term could be a better solution and the money is there to explore that now. And that's something many of us have wondered about for a long time, um, you know, and we've lamented that the Army Corps put these breakwaters in and it's caused all these problems. But, you know, now we have the opportunity to look at a solution that's a little bit out of the box that could solve that problem. So I would encourage the Harbor District to look more closely at that and to actively consider it. Thank you. In response to uh, the one shoreline plan, I'm aware of it, but I don't think they've made it public yet. Uh, but we we are working closely with One Shoreline and the Army Corps of Engineer on all these projects about shoreline protection. Uh, and we currently have a meeting scheduled uh, to take place next week with all three agencies. That's great. Uh, Fran Pollard, uh, you know, you were partly responsible for starting this agenda item when, with your comment at our last meeting. Uh, did you have a comment or question for Jim, Fran? Yes, I have lots of comments and questions. <laughs> um, yes, Fran Pollard, I live in El Granada. I have been here, I'm going on my 52nd year. I was part of a, a coastal chairman to save the coast back in 1972 to keep it from becoming like LA and most all up and down the state that passed in 1972 to save the views and the coast from overdevelopment. And I've been participating in this. I'm the one that attended your, you had just started, Jim. Um, first of all, I do wanna commend you. you. You have done a great job and all the projects you presented tonight look great. I love the West shoreline. Uh, I think the uh, pier, Johnson Pier, needs to be taken care of desperately before it collapses. So that's important. But the, my main concern is Surfer's Beach and that um, development. And I, I, talk, I spoke up at a couple of the meetings. Uh, it, this was not presented to the public. Even Half Moon Bay has not heard it. I've talked to counselors there, the city council. And they have never presented it. You, the Harbor District never presented it to the city council. It's, I tried, I talked to you at a couple of the meetings and, and asked to present it. I asked you to hold off approving the plan before you present it to the community, to the mid coast and to the Half Moon Bay. And I was ignored and it got passed. I remember Sabrina saying, that this was the first presentation brought to the commission and that was the night you approved it. So it did not get widespread um, attention that it should have gotten. It, this should have, a big project like that, we've been waiting for Surfers Beach to be approved, I mean, and, and uh, fixed for decades now. And, and instead of it being, uh, brought to the attention of the public, it's it's almost been uh, secretive. We go online and go on the website and it's the hardest thing to find. We can find all kinds of different things on the website, but not Surfers Beach and how, you're, how it's developed. So I agree with everything that um, Dan Haggerty said and that Lenny 
Schultz presented and said, um, they're right on. I don't want to see any more views blocked. Those trees need to be either taken out, all those big cypress trees, or trimmed to the to the uh, height of the fence that's there so that it becomes like a, a maybe a hedge and it hides the, the RVs, but not the view of the ocean. And we don't want any more trees in the new park that you're building. Um, uh, it's a very attractive plan, your Surfers Beach RV and green space, but it's not the thing that's needed. As I said at your meetings, the most important thing on the coast is parking. And you're taking out public parking and surfer parking. That's why it's called Surfer's Beach. That's where the surfers go. I, I've, you never answered my question. I've asked it a couple of times why there's a need for eight handicap parking and, and instead of public parking and surfer's beach parking, surfer parking. Um, I, I was down there today and, and I noticed that it's been, um, <clears throat> that, that you've already removed the RVs from two, two sections. And I think that's great. I think though you sh should not allow those, those RVs back in. I know the owner wants to keep that going. He's made a lot of money off the Harbor District, and I don't think that he need. He's building another RV park at the other end of the harbor uh, off Capistrano. So I don't think he needs every single space of RVs for RVs. And um, it's beginning to be suspicious that maybe some of those uh, handicap parking are really to help the RV people that come in and, and they're going to take it over or something. It's just not, it makes no sense to have eight handicap and do away with, with public parking and beach goers. And, uh, and yes, the question was asked about um, whether they're going to lose this parking uh, uh, in, in El Granada. Yes, there should, there, El Granada, that's another thing I've worked decades on saving that Burnham Strip for a park. And the Granada District is now creating a park there. And that parking lot that the surfers and, and beachgoers have been using is going to be part of the park. They're not going to be able to use that anymore. So they're losing that. And you cut down um, the parking in the harbor and the the highway is already full. I don't know where people are going to go. And we don't want them in El Granada all up and down our residential street. So that's the next thing that will happen. So please, please, uh, if you have to buy out those few um, RV spaces, uh, um, I think both rows should be bought out or 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 use for for public parking then it then i suppose it wouldn't hurt to have the if if that eight handicaps is needed otherwise even four handicaps seems like plenty and create uh that that would uh that would allow eight more parking spaces for cars if if you just did away with four of the handicap at least eight spaces okay so fran fran I, I get i get the concern um views and parking um, yeah, and my other thing is the is the restroom. I I know that at one point it was it was going to be down where it could be seen in the beginning of the planning. Then people complained, no, we don't want it in the view site, so it got moved back. Now I see it. I, I'm not really sure where it's being placed. So I'd like an answer to that. I'd like an answer why the eight uh, handicap. And I'd like to know if you can possibly just keep out those two rows of um, of um, RVs and l allow all that to become public parking and 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 surfer parking. Thank you. Can you please answer that? Those three questions. I and can. I, well, I can get back to you with all those answers. Yes. You're not going to answer again tonight. Uh, I. We'll do our best for keeping uh, public notices of all our meetings again. Um, the parking, I'll have to go back and look at the requirement that says that we have to put those eight parking spots in and I'll provide that to you. Uh, and then for the restroom placard, I, I'll get the actual design 
drawing of exactly where that building is and how many square footage is and the view shed from the highway. Yeah, if it are can we be talking placed... about the restroom? Are we talking about the restroom where the people are going to wash off their boats and and you were no, we're talking that? about no. the restroom at Surfers Beach. Okay, thanks. Yeah, can it be placed if if it's in a view site? Can it be placed somewhere back against the fence and hidden from the from the somewhere along that area where it's out of sight? Not that's not the first thing you want to see when you go to the beach. Okay, so Fran, thanks for your passion here. Um, we have to allow others to speak as well. Um, I see Michelle Dragony. Uh, you haven't spoken yet tonight, Michelle. Do you have a comment or a question? Um, yeah, just look at the chat. A lot of people have been asking questions, and the answers are all in the chat. She's posted links to a number of articles. And uh, Correct. just to pre... To just to preview something, I think we are going to start the practice of posting the chat uh, in the <clears throat> on the MCC website so that people can get the links. I, I got to object to the chat being a, a, a distraction from the meeting that we're having right here. Somebody starts reading that and then they lose uh, attention to the meeting. There should be only one meeting. Okay, Dan. Um, Let's go back to public comment. Jane Pray Silver, you um, had a I'm comment. To, to, uh, chats are reference points. You're not supposed to necessarily read them. You click on them and then you look at them later. Yeah, well, we we also keep them as a way of exchanging information. So I think uh, going oh, yeah. forward, yeah, absolutely. But we'll publish the we'll publish the chats uh, in the same way we publish the the minutes. Jane uh, Pray Silver again. Yeah, I would just keep my comments fairly short. Um, Jim, you've done some great work. I'm, I'm kind of relieved to see this because I, one of my concerns is that much of the traffic would end up on Burnham Strip in the, there, there's going to be showers and bathrooms there. My only out, still concern about it is if it's easier for people to park on the east side, even double park and let their kids run into the bathroom, we're not going to solve the traffic problem on Highway 1. And I'm hoping that that component has been looked at so that um, People needing to use showers or bathrooms will, you know, more of them will gravitate over there as well because people come into um, the neighborhood to short pass the servers putting on their suits and all the stuff that happens on Highway 1. Um, I agree with Dan about the and everyone about the views. We, we You know, as residents here, we love the views. Um, but just two two other comments. One is that Dan mentioned the character of the building. I don't think we really want to see fishnets hung up. I don't think it's about the decoration. I think it's about the finishes and the quality of materials used. When you go up to Portland, Oregon, or you see an old building or a historical building, there's heavy timbers. There's very fine uh, windows. There's heavy brass. Those are the kinds of things that speak to a substantial harbor and have a sense of history to it. Um, so, I, it, you know, there was a, a quite a few uh, time, times ago, there was a proposal to put up a fake lighthouse and the neighborhood exploded. So I, I, I think we want something kind of classy but substantial. Um, I agree with Dan about the benches. It's cold. To put an old person or a child on a concrete bench that pulls the, the heat right out of the body. So I would rather see um, wooden benches. I And the last two comments is we're losing our ma and pa shops because of rent, rent um, is too high. And we'd like to make sure that we still have those family run businesses. Um, and I would also say that the harbor is filled with artists. It would be really nice to get an artistic touch to what we're doing here. For instance, something really subtle like the names of various fishes, you know, engraved on the benches. It's subtle and nice and has character. So I would encourage um, incorporating some artistic um, input on, on what you're doing. But good job. Otherwise, I, I, I like much of what I've seen. But I agree with, uh, you know, 100% what the rest of the community has told you. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sid, we've kept you uh, waiting for a while. Sid Young. Thank you so much. Um, I'll start with the quick one first, but Jim, you might want to write down my items because I have quite a few while I've been waiting. I've been adding to my list. So next time, call me first, Greg. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Number can one, can you, can you I'm sorry. Into the chat? No, I'm not going to type them in. I've got my time. I waited to talk. Okay. If you wanted me to paste them in the chat, you should have told me 15 speakers ago. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the first thing, Jim, is the foghorn volume. I've seen comments on next door, and I have personally not heard it too loudly lately, even though I live in Seal Cove. Has it been decreasing and increasing lately? That's one question. Second thing, it's not really a question, but you mentioned that you have funded part of the peer remodel, but it, you have 49,000 more money to go, but I think you meant 49 million. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And then um, my third thing is um, I, to everybody who's been commenting on the design of the bathrooms in the parking lot, that was vetted way back in as they started doing an RFP in 2019. So yes. this is like the Monday morning quarterbacks. I think we should not try to redesign it now when it's already ready to go. I hate to say it, but and, and then I have another question about funding on the other projects you mentioned. How do you get your funding? I know you get some from property taxes. Where do you expect the rest of the money to come from? And that's one of my questions. Six is Oyster Point. You mentioned the birth vacancy rate at Princeton Harbor is um, uh, you know, almost hardly any um, vacancies. What about the births at Oyster Point? What's the percentage of occupancy there? Um, and then I guess the big elephant in the room that I wanted to mention is that you guys have your meeting in the middle of the day. So no wonder you're having people come in here and say, well, I didn't know about this project. I personally didn't attend very many Harbor District meeting because um, there was a lot of nastiness for a while. So, um, but I did attend the one that you held at night for the um, the retail building. And that was an interesting Zoom meeting. And I, you know, I wish I'd known more about, you know, what the funding was, or I would have been able to weigh in a little more. But I think people brought up a lot of good points. And that's still on YouTube is my understanding. So people yes. could look for that. Um, but I would like you to put on the agenda, because Fran brought this up too, that she didn't know much about it. And I know Fran is very engaged like I am. Maybe you could ask the Harbor District to have their meetings in the evenings instead of midday in the middle of the week because it's ridiculous. Nobody's, the public is not able to all leave work and listen to these meetings. Like people like Dan, you know, he works during the day. So, and I think uh, somebody else said they didn't, weren't able to beat, oh, um, Kimberly Williams said she couldn't be at the meeting because she had something in the middle of the day. And um, that's just, you know, those are things I wanted you to answer. I especially what about the funding? What about all these uh, the retail building? I still would like to know how you're going to get money for that. I'd like to see it, you know, just remodeled and not completely torn down and fancy fancified like down in San Diego or something. But um, also one other thing, I, I think it was Fran mentioned that the RV lot is owned by Keaton or Han or, or the lessor, lessor is not the owner. I think it's Half Moon Bay property, but I believe the Harbor District controls the leasing on it. So, you know, he is going to be building a 50 parking space RV lot right at the corner of the Harbor at Capistrano. So maybe he could sacrifice a few more of his um, leased out spaces from the Harbor District to um, be for public parking. And the very last thing, I would like someone to look into the red zone all along the east, I mean, west side of Highway 1 at Surfers Beach, because I don't see any no parking signs there. And I personally think Half Moon Bay just painted it red at will. So people would park on the east side. And um, that's, that's wrong. I think somebody should check in with Caltrans on that. Thank you. Maybe you can answer some of my questions, Jim. I can't. The, the Foghorn is, is controlled by the United States Coast Guard. Oh. Uh, they recently came out and replaced the entire structure uh, and put in a new modern horn. And they put baffles in, uh, I believe they put baffles in the side of the horn uh, that directs towards shoreline. So the harbor itself or along the coast, that, that volume is 
down is, is my understanding, but out at sea, it's the same volume that goes out to sea. And also the acoustics here on the coast, depending on the, the fog and the wind, sound is carried differently. Some nights I hear it, some nights I don't, and it's all based on the atmospherics and if sound is ca carrying or not. So it is a brand new horn and the volume has been uh, manipulated a little bit to uh, keep it less volume towards shore is my understanding. Uh, funding, where are we getting our funding from? We have some funding that is already reserved that we keep in a fund for capital improvements uh, or other projects. And that's what's funding a lot of our projects is the money we've saved over the years, uh, not doing a lot of construction. And then going on to the future, uh, we do get our funding from property taxes and from revenue. And I'm trying to do, or the board is very interested in is increasing our revenue uh, so and so that we can do more things uh, in the harbor and keep more things up to date and maintenance up to date. Uh, the OPM occupancy is a lot lower than Pillar Point Harbor. I, I believe it's in the 70s percent, but it is growing significantly uh, now that the construction is almost complete on Oyster Point. So a lot more boats are coming back and our occupancy rate is going up. Uh, I will share your concerns with the elephant in the room with the board with uh, meetings in the middle of the day. Well, thank you. I, I also really don't think we should be spending any money to improve Oyster Point because that's owned by the city of San Francisco. And why would the Harbor District be spending money to improve somebody else's property? But I'd like to see some of the improvements happening that you talked about tonight. And I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Burnett Silveria. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to uh, uh, support and agree with the view corridor concerns that were raised, as well as uh, state that the you know parking options need to be incorporated into your plans. Uh, maybe the RV buyout is, a, is an option, I don't know, but, but otherwise people will just simply park on the El Granada streets, walk through the Berm Strip once it's developed, and then we're back to the same problem with parking. So parking definitely needs to be considered in here uh, in whatever you're doing. And uh, if it's uh, amount of reducing parking, then a parking needs to be made up somewhere else. And some idea of if you are doing these developments, what this increased uh, needs will be for parking. Those are my statements. Parking definitely needs to be in a priority in this thing somewhere. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to close public comment. Now we would go around the council, and the council might have some concluding comments or questions. Two things are uh, striking me. One is we need an MCC member who is assigned to monitor and participate in uh, the Harbor District more than we apparently have been. And I'm wondering if that's Dan who's going to volunteer to do that or I work Scott who day. I work during the day. So who's who's motivated to cover the agendas and try and attend Harbor District meetings? Let's let's get them to get it at night. Um, and we're going to talk about we this at our, our retreat. We made that. Okay, you want to talk about it at our retreat? Yes. Normally we do that. Okay. So so I, I unmuted myself, but I will I will put myself back on mute and wait for the retreat. Ditto. Claire, did you have anything? Claire, do you have anything you wanted to say? Uh, I would just really uh, appreciate uh, an update at least once a month from the Harbor District, uh, if you can do that, Jim. We in the past, uh, the the Harbor manager did come regularly to MCC meetings and and bring us up to date on things, and I think it helped a lot. Even if it's not once a month, every other month, but some some period of frequency. I can do that. Makes sense. Gus, did you have any comment? Yeah, I mean, I, I, if um, if one of us is is 
sitting in on on the harbors um, meetings and stuff, I I would sort of say rather than just sort of ask Jim to come regularly, just cause I would that would be more likely to say like you know why don't we why don't we have a process where we ask him to come when it seems like it makes sense because we're because we're um, managing you know like keeping track of what they're what they're doing and then then when we when we need to get an update that we can ask him and it sounds like Jim is very willing to come and talk to us um but I, I just but rather than just have him like come and like have to block out time in the evenings and, and such I, I would rather just sort of make it a little bit more like when we ask I'm sure he would um anyway we can talk about that at the retreat I don't know we have to settle that right this second Claire, Claire has a comment on your comment I think yeah, uh, Jim. We, I don't want to like pressure you and stuff, but but there are two two reasons. There's a couple of things. One, it's always better to have the belt and suspenders model. If one of us is going to fall down on the job, at least the the other person will pick up on it. So if if we're trying to keep up with you, that's great. But if you can help us do that, that would also be even better. The other thing is, quite honestly, I think people have alluded to this. There's two reasons why people don't follow the Harbor District. One is because it's during the daytime, and the other is because it has a history of having really bad meetings. Obviously, that has changed, and um, it's good to hear that from you that you, and see how much you're actually doing. It's wonderful, but I don't. I think a lot of people don't know that, and the more you can get your information out to us, the better. Agreed. Uh, thanks. Okay. Um, Dan, your hand's still up, but uh, I thought we were done. Well, no, I didn't say anything. Okay, your hand was still up. All right, I'll lower it. Yeah, so uh, just to summarize, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, obviously I've uh, already expressed concerns with the retail, the plans of the retail, and uh, um, <clears throat> really uh, strongly have uh, voiced how... Uh, Kind of unique the catch Joanne and the harbor bar is and it's it's just kind of a jewel to the the whole region not just not just our community but the whole region that comes here they everybody loves it um so the retail is a concern um <clears throat> the sand um i just want to throw out there you know uh, i haven't really heard any discussions about what what can be done to help keep the sand on the beach uh i know that's probably a big one but uh i'm interested in that uh, I've already talked about the bathroom, um, and I agree with uh, uh, Kimberly that, you know, uh, the finishing touches, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's not too late to, to make sure that the finishing touches actually kind of blend with the character. Um, <clears throat> you know, I want to I want to quickly say, uh, <clears throat> Jim, you know, we had a meeting um about lighting in the past you mentioned and uh i know that we didn't all agree in the in the room um i'm actually a fan of uh low level light yellow uh amber light fe festoon lighting and I, I said that and others said no no festoon lighting at all but i clearly said the low level light and what um unfortunately you know, now Albert, I don't know who did it, but uh, it's, you know, it's Albert's got a good thing going on. Uh, but what, what they have out there now is they have the bright white LED festoon lighting, the actual absolute opposite of what I, I uh, you know, kind of said that I felt was appropriate. It's, it's very bright. It's bright white LED um in that festoon it could easily the, the the bulbs can easily be changed to a soft amber uh light which would not be a problem in my opinion um as far as the foghorn i did call the, the uh um coast guard got no response and i want to i just want to say that you know i am not the only one that loves and you know for for 35 years i've heard this foghorn it is not uh, you know, uh, uh, it's part of the community. It's it's part of um, you know the seaside. Um, I, I remember you know being on the telephone with somebody across the nation, and and they heard you know I was out in front of the house. They heard the foghorn, and they said they said oh, 
I, oh, I love that. Um, I just have no idea why. You know, I, I would like to ask, who objected to the sound of the foghorn? It's always been here. Um, so I'm obviously a fan of the foghorn to come back. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to other people about that as well. Not the only one. Um, so we're trying to... Right, so, Dan, 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 we've heard a lot from you. And, and I want to just try and change the direction a little bit here. When the air molecules stop vibrating after this discussion, what is going to be actionable and remembered? And so the way I would handle that is to say, who on the council is going to lead the preparation of whatever research and letter you, that is, you collect the council, not just you, Dan, the council, what letter do you want to write? We've, ra we've seen a lot of passion from the community. We've got a ton of con comments in the transcript. So Dan, are you going to lead the development of a letter that registers these comments and then also do the research to figure out with Jim what subset of our concerns are still actionable. And to the point was made, I think, by Sid, or maybe it was Lenny, what's too late? I, so I, I, who's going to who's gonna work on this issue and create an actionable letter? That's propose, my question to the council. I propose that we don't rush to a letter and we just stay in close relationship with uh, Mr. Pruitt. Anybody else on the council motivated to take a lead on Harbor District letter and action items? All right, so then I'm going to pend this for the retreat. I'm going to thank Jim for coming. And I do want to say, my God, is it better now at the Harbor District than it was before you got there, Jim? I mean, you, you probably don't even know. Um, we will send you the transcript. We will look forward to your answers on the 42 questions and comments that we gave. Um, and I hope, Lenny, I'm not taking any more public comment. Um, and I hope that we will come to work together on something that is truly actionable. Uh, many of these concerns I agree with, but uh, I'm just not going to repeat them. Um, but I understand the Harbor District is a business that has to make money and you have motivations for doing what you're doing. So let's see if we can't work together and the spirit that Claire is talking about, uh, make sure we're mutually reinforcing each other um, going forward. Now, that is not the last Harbor related issue we're gonna have tonight. Greg, can because I interrupt next... for a second? Yeah, second. yeah, go ahead. There was a picture I wanted to show the council that I somehow fell out of my slide deck that I think it's important for them to see. It, it's also something I'm very proud of with the. Johnson Pier project, if that's okay. Yeah, you have the screen share capability. It'll be real quick. It's just one picture. So that picture there is Johnson Pier after the uh, docks have all been upgraded. Those two docks, either side of the pier will be new. It will allow, allow dock access to the public and to the boaters directly to the floating docks without going on Johnson Pier itself. All the off-the-boat sales traffic that is now interfering and con congested with the safety issues of all the work being done on Johnson Pier will be eliminated because they'll be able to walk directly down to the floating docks from the bulkhead of the harbor on both sides. And then the docks are connected underneath the pier uh, so you can go either side and uh, get to any boat in the floating dock system off of Johnson Pier. So that's going to be a great uh, improvement to the safety of Pillar Point Harbor. And with that, I'll unshare. Well, speaking as a sailor who has sailed across, you know, around the Horn and down to Half Moon Bay and stayed there, I can agree with that, that both of those changes are welcome improvements. So um, with that, I'll I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Uh, we have another agenda item, though, that I believe relates, uh, and that has to do with the Ocean Siders trailer-based business. Um, uh, I put it on the agenda at the request of Dave Olson, who has been made a co-host. And uh, I'm going to ask if Dave would present the material. I believe Meredith may also be here, if I heard that right. <clears throat> yes, at least she's still on the participant list. I think she's uh, still here. I just saw yep. her. Yep, here I am. Hi. 
So um, before I share anything, I'll say that um, I became aware of this project before I became aware that Meredith and I had mutual friends. Um, and uh, it was an interesting uh, side thing, but I've been helping Meredith off and on, not unfortunately successfully with the county bureaucracy, particularly the, the health department. Um, and so this project was originally going to be beside the post office in El Granada and due to health department requirements um, that made it financially non-feasible. Uh, it moved down into the harbor. Both parcels are owned by the harbor district, which made that easier. Unfortunately, the harbor district uh, really helped Meredith about that. And I'll let Meredith talk about that more. But uh, I brought this up as I as we as I got the council involved and others did with the uh, Hop Dog Mer Brewery back in before it actually started. Uh, they came to us uh, at a meeting, and we uh, put together uh, essentially a, a letter for them to the, the ABC uh, uh, sponsor, saying that we would definitely like to see that business. And we did a similar thing with the Happen Bay Distillery when they wanted to open a public-facing um, tasting room at uh, what is now the Jetty Wave property. So this is not a new thing with the council. And I'm pretty sure we have done this in the past with other businesses. We're not exclusively doing this with alcohol businesses. <laughs> um, but anyway, I do believe this will be a, a very good business. So uh, Meredith, do you want to introduce yourself before I go ahead and show the presentation? Sure. Hi, I'm Meredith Cassian. Uh, I am an ocean cider. Uh, I live in Moss Beach, uh, have been for only about three and a half years. So nothing compared to so, so many around here. Uh, but I feel like I've been very much a part of the community uh, ever since. I work with the Surfrider organization. I'm the hold on to your butt project manager with Surfriders. Uh, I'm a regular volunteer twice a week at Coastside Hope. Uh, and just do a lot of beach cleanups, a lot of picking up cigarette butts. Um, so this this project is something that I just want to, you know, incorporate the enjoyment of the ocean and sitting there by the boat docks and just just chill out and invite the community to join me in that. Okay, with that, I have an extremely long uh, two-page presentation. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to share the screen on that. Hopefully that is up. Um, so this first uh, page is a mock of the trailer on the left, the business is run completely out of a trailer, no permanent structures. And then the area to the right is uh, a fire pit and um, some awnings and some seating. And uh, the uh, URL is down here in the lower right corner, uh, oceansiders.com, pretty hard to remember. Uh, so I'm going to have to uh, change the scale on this one, I think. Yeah, so this one shows the location, the new location of Ocean Ciders, um, and it may match up with, if you remember, the uh, coastal trail section that Jim was talking about. Um, part of that will be improved as part of this project. So it's the area... Uh, called Perch Beach, uh, just south of Hapman Bay Kayak. And um, so there won't be any new parking. Um, there won't be any new permanent buildings. There won't be any new permanent lights, dark sky compliant or otherwise. Um, and I think this is about as, as nice a business as you can get. The... Uh, 
operation is self-contained uh, won't and the cups being used for the ciders are um, reusable for the most part. The ones that are not reusable are going to be compostable. So I'm really looking forward to being able to sit down there, look out at the harbor, uh, which people eloquently talked about during the last item, and uh, drink some cider. Uh, I don't have plans to bring up the letter, uh, but if people want me to, I've got the letter on tap too. Uh, Meredith, you, you want to say anything on? more to either of those slides? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, Jim talked about the coastal trail. Basically, the county, you know, wanted me to have nice, flat, uh, ADA compliant um, walkway from the site to the the street to the parking lot where the the public restroom is, and we're going to clean up the coastal trail that ramps down, um, you know, from my site from the trail up to Pillar Point Harbor Boulevard, because that's where patrons will park in the existing parking lot. Um, but it's mostly a business to encourage, you know, bikers and hikers and kayakers who are already using the coastal trail. I want people to, to stop off. Um, I want them to go grab some food from Catch Joann's uh, and then come over and just enjoy uh, hang out by the fire, uh, watch the boats, come sit all day long. I'm going to have little blankets. Um, so yeah, it's just a really, really uh, lovely little hangout right by the water. That's that's what the, the business model is all about, a very, very pop-up kind of place um, to not block views, to just have an enjoyment of the area in some cozy, cozy furniture. So I see Jim Pruitt has raised his hand um, and given that he seems to be a principal stakeholder in this, I wonder, Jim, if you wanted to make some comments first before we go around the council and then the public. That would be fantastic sure. and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, let me turn my camera on so you know I'm here. Um, the Harbor District is 100% uh, behind this project. We fully support it, and we're doing everything we can to assist uh, Ocean Cider to become a reality. Uh, one thing that uh, we're working with Ocean Cider on and trying to understand is a requirement that she uh, install or connect to the sewer system uh, and connect that to the trailer. The trailer does, will not be washing dishes. The trailer does not have a restroom. It has a three basin sink that will generate about two gallons at most gray water a day, uh, washing hands basically, and rinsing out the bar top uh, uh, sponges or uh, water cloths. Uh, and there's a requirement on her right now to do that and install that sewage system to the trailer at a cost of about $25,000. Um, and the district doesn't necessarily want uh, permanent sewage lines down there, especially with the TMDL program that we're under. We don't need another sewage uh, lateral being installed. The trailer itself has a holding tank that can be emptied on a regular basis, depending on the size of that tank. And Ocean Ciders has already made arrangements with a licensed contractor who cleans out uh, other gray water or black water tanks to service her trailer. So we're working with her and then connecting with the county to see what we can do to possibly get a waiver around that. Uh, but I wanted to bring that to your attention also because it really is it's our very high fence to jump over to get this business established, a $25,000 <laughs> ticket. Um, Let me just ask you to clarify for the public TMDL definition. Total maximum daily limit. Uh, the water, everybody knows that the, the there's bacteria on the beaches on the coast side. You've seen the signs uh, indicating that, and we're, we're fighting that as a, as a system, we're working with the county, we're working with uh, local agencies, we're working with the different cities on how to uh, reduce the 
bacteria load that's coming down into the from the creeks and the watersheds uh, and contaminating our beaches. A part of that is uh, making sure all the sewage lines are tight and not leaking, which our sewer system is quite old and they're doing their job, their job to make sure that those laterals aren't leaking and causing too any bacteria load into the harbor. And by adding another lateral into the harbor, uh, it just incre increases that risk, especially down to Surfers Beach, which is a sandy area and, you know, within the flood zone, we don't necessarily want permanent structures there. So we're, we're trying to work with the county on that and uh, see what we can do, but uh, support from the MCC might be of value too. Uh, okay, let me ask a few clarifying questions and then go around the council for the public. Um, my memory of that area is there's a downhill slope uh, as is evidenced by those trails. Uh, is there any chance that this structure will block views of the ocean from above? Not from the trail, no. And it's, as you saw from the drawing, you'll be able to see through. Uh, it's, it's not a building. Sorry, uh, Meredith, I'm stepping on your toes a little bit, but these are all questions we addressed when we approved the lease. Okay. Secondly, is that trailer permanent in terms of its location there, or is it going to be removed in the winter or some months of the year? Is it going to be always there, even though it's not a permanent structure? Yeah, it's uh, the trailer is, well, per my liquor license, it has to substitute for brick and mortar. So it is, it is there. Um, and then the seating area um, has to be enclosed, but I didn't want, because it is 21 and up, it is a bar, um, but I didn't want to block as you know little blockage as possible. So they're just gonna be posts with rope um, surrounding, and that's the fenced in area for the seating. Um, the gazebos, as you can see, um, are, are for, you know, wind blockage, for rain blockage, uh, but the, the business is going to be open, you know, as much as possible uh, if it is rainy and cold uh, and no one wants to come hang out there, uh, then, you know, we'll probably close. Um, but, but yeah, the trailer itself is uh, a 16 foot trailer by seven feet. So 16 by seven feet. So it's it's like a horse trailer, um, if you can picture that, um, but but more like a, a stationary food truck. Yeah. Okay, and so because it's going to be resident there, does that mean there's no need for a road to be developed for ingress and egress for the trail? Right, uh, so, you know, there is, um, if you can see, well, I, I don't know the the um, if we can bring up the presentation again, but um, you can see that there already is um, the drive that Half Moon Bay kayak staff uses. You know they drive into that dirt road, that dirt path, and park right in front of Half Moon Bay kayak. Well, we're going to just kind of clean up that road, make it nice and flat, tamp down with base rock, um, because my well, for one thing, I'm going to need to have to get my trailer in <laughs> in there. So I am going to have to drive up there. And for deliveries, I am going to have to have um, people drive, you know, pretty much up to my site um, to, to make deliveries of the kegs, uh, deliver to propane filling, that kind of thing. Um, but they will... They will basically stop right at the front, you know, and then and then come into where the trailer is. Um, and, and you can, you know, Upper Perch Beach. My site isn't taking up, uh, you know, the whole Upper Perch Beach. There's going to be a, a lot of area that I I'm going to work with the Harbor District to to do some, you know, put down some some lovely um, native plants and things like that because right now all that's there is the invasive ice plants and uh, you know I I dislike them as much as everyone does so um, so I'm gonna help really you know make that that site as as pretty um, as possible and and just you know, just for enjoyment, because right now it's just kind of a, a flat space that is full of holes where we can all, you know, 
twist our ankles on. So uh, it's just going to be a, a lovely, lovely space for for people to want to just hang out. And for those, uh, I have two more questions. Two more I questions could, before I open this to the council. Could I um, interject a bit? This partly answers that last question. For those who may not know, Perch Beach is actually old uh, spoils from previous dredging, um, and it was you know so it's it's pretty much the mud and sand from the harbor bottom and relatively flat already. Is that it, Dave? That's it. Okay. Um, is this going to be a useful source of revenue for the Harbor District, Jim? Yes, it will be. Okay, good. And then finally, just to clarify this so we don't get in the same situation we are on some of the other issues you've discussed today, what is the status of the approval and permitting process? I just heard that the, the sewer authority, I assume it's GCSD, needs to to rule on something. What else, what other steps of approval remain before this uh, can be uh, acted on? Uh, where I am in the process is that I, I have gotten one round of notes from environmental health services. Um, I have heard from Coastside Water. Um, I have heard from drainage, drainage department. Still waiting to hear from fire. Um, but, you know, hopefully I'm in the home stretch. I mean, it's been 15 months and I know that's nothing compared to what a lot of people have waited for uh, permits of, you know, for housing rebuilt and things like that. Um, but yeah, so it's been 15 months uh, and I, I'm very much hoping that I'm in the home stretch of my permits. So, uh, so I will also be assigned a hearing date um, hopefully in February. So I hearing it at what venue? Uh, it's, it's the county, you know, it's part of the process for um, coastal development permits uh, is that okay. you need to, yeah, it's, it's open to the public. Um, but I, I had also put up a, a sign, a poster, which I was thrilled to see that it, it fared okay um, during the storms. But um, I had to post, post a sign that says, you know, we're going to be selling beer or wine um, right here on this site. And that poster had to remain there for 30 days and it did. So, um, you know, no, if any public, if anybody from the public wants to, to comment or whatever, that's, that's what ABC is waiting for. And the, uh, CCWD, they are involved because you need a water hookup. So they're, yeah, basically um, the county sent out my plans and the application to mm -hmm. them, um, but because the Harbor District is a private entity, um, my my work with them to get the water and all that is, is just a, a private deal with the Harbor District. So they don't need to be involved, but they have, you know, they're aware of the project. Okay. Um uh, from the council, then, um, I know Claire is most anxious. Somebody's to, very anxious. <laughs> so we'll take Claire over Gus. Even be kind. Please be kind to me. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. Uh, you, you. You're so enthusiastic. It's going to be wonderful, I'm sure. However, <laughs> I have many concerns. Okay, lay it on me. I'm going to lay it on you. You're... you're Okay, we'll, we'll back up. We have, to start with, as Dave said, we have uh, stepped in with other businesses. I don't know about Hop Dogma, but I do know about the others he mentioned, as well as the wine room in, in uh, Moss Beach. We stepped in because the, the person that was applying had a problem with getting their permits and uh, wanted our opinion uh, to help them um, with the county. Yeah. Um, and... My initial impression about what this was about was that you had no problem. Everything was just. <laughs> I just can, can you just listen to me, please? No, I, no, I'm just laughing. So, I'm sorry. Please, <laughs> everything was going swimmingly, and you did not need our advice or at or our um, uh, approval or anything. You just wanted us to say this sounds like a really wonderful place to go hang out. We don't do that. 
We don't do that. That is not what we're in the business of doing. We're, okay, we're here as a governmental uh, group who helps with um, issues involving, involving the county. Okay, the county always, the planning commission, planning department sends the MCC referrals on pending development. To my knowledge, and I could be wrong, but I'm probably the only one that would know, we have not received any referral on this project. Um, so it's unlikely that you're going to have uh, um, a hearing in February because um, unless they just are gonna ignore us, uh, we, we have not been asked to review this and we normally would be. Uh, so I, we may be, and if we did follow our usual process, what we would do would be to um, review the referral that they sent us and then respond. And there is a certain way that we do that. Um, but none of that has been initiated. Um, uh, so just on a, not, not making any comment at all about your business, which sounds delightful, um, there are process things here that really bother me as to what we're actually doing here tonight. Can, can I, yeah, can I speak to it? Feel free. Thank you, thank you. So, um, so yeah, just to clarify what's happening um, is that I, I did have a lot of problems, a lot of problems um, with with this business that was shaped specifically for what the Coastal Commission wanted, what the Harbor District wanted, what the county would allow. That is how it was shaped as a, a sort of pop up. So, you know, no permanent structure, that kind of thing. And because as Dave and Jim both said, I originally was applying and paying for um, the application to be in, in a different site in El Granada. So, yes, I had a, a number of problems and that's how Dave, Dave helped me a, a great deal at the, in the early days. Um, Don Horsley got involved. There was a, a lot. Sam Cita got involved. There was a lot of problems um, with, with them trying to understand how, how this project would, would manifest because it didn't fit in anyone's box. It wasn't a brick and mortar, but it also wasn't a moving food truck. Um, so, so basically, there's that. But what we're here today to talk about, um, Summer Burleson is my is a senior planner at Building and Planning in the county. Um, she simply requested that I loop in the MCC on this project. And I had done so, as Dave said, at the very, very beginning, 15 months ago. And we talked a great deal. He helped a great deal, try, try to help me navigate this whole thing. Um, and, and he's kept in touch. So, so basically it was, it was a request from the county to simply say, make, make sure that the MCC knows about Ocean Ciders. But you know what? They have a process for doing that. And as far as I can tell, they did not follow the process. Well, the it, problem, Claire, okay. the answer to that is there is no, there will be no PLN on this because there's no, no structure. I, I just don't, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stop after this. I've one other question, which is, are you paying for that road? Um, which, which road? The, the road, coastal trail? No, the road that you're going to use to bring your supplies out. I mean, I'm doing all the work. Uh, I'm paying for all, like the fixing of the coastal trail that Jim showed you, um, and and the the base rock and all that on the road that comes in front of Half Moon Bay Kayak. That that's all under my purview. I'm doing you're, you're all paying, of that. Work. You're 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 I'm business, paying for your it. business is paying for yes. maintaining that road. Yes. Okay. So other than that. Um, I, I won't. I won't say anything further. I just think this is highly unusual, and um, if if uh, the planning department wanted input from the MCC, they probably should have approached the MCC and not told a potential business person to come out and and talk to us um, without. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know. I. This is not your fault. I'm just. I'm just thinking. I'm just kind of in a, in a different box here and I'll, yeah. I'll just listen to whatever the other people have to say because this is not how it's usually done. 
Right, and I was personally involved in this because it didn't look like there was ever going to be a PLN. It's similar to a use permit, but there's nothing in the county like this. We found actually several other businesses that we thought were exactly like this. Yeah. Turned out none of them were operating with permits. Yeah. So the county did not have a model for this. Um, and I did mention this, I believe, at a couple of MCC meetings in passing. But uh, there won't be a referral because there isn't a, a, a PLN. And so I'm that's part of why I am here, because I was involved from the beginning as an MCC representative. Okay. The, the other one okay. I want to say is what about the sewer issue? I, is, is, I, I don't know what makes sense with that. So I'm, if, I'm open to other people talking about the sewer issue as well. Gus, did you want to make a comment, question? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say, Meredith, I think this is a wonderful idea. And um, one of the issues that I wanted to get involved in when I stepped onto this council is how to encourage more entrepreneurship and small business um, development of locals here. Rather, I, I don't want more Ritz Carlton's coming in here, like giant corporations from God knows where. Um, so, um, so I, I love your idea. I think it's a reasonable balance in the way you've designed it. Trying to, you know, not have a bunch of stuff that's interfering with uh, with the view while still making it workable as a as a business and whatever. The processes may have been in the in the past. I, I just want to say, I, I, if there's something I can do to be supportive, I'm I'm happy to do it. Thanks so much. Sure. Dan Haggerty, council comment. Yes. Uh, hi, Meredith. Hi, Dan. Uh, um, can we look at the? I'm sorry. Can we look at the the? Um, the perspective with the, with the fence, the, the sure. image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that I really favor uh, in, in, in general, this, this idea. Um, that's the plan. Is there a perspective? Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm bringing the other one up just a minute. Yeah. So uh, I agree with Gus. Um, you know, I think, you know, this is a, 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 a perfect model of a low impact, um, you know, it's not block. It's an example of not blocking, um, you know, minimal views. Um, um, I, uh, you know, I think that, I think that uh, examples like this, maybe, you know, of uh, like shed row um, retail outlets, you know, like just small sheds spaced 10 feet apart you know, somewhere in the parking lot, just to kind of, you know, I know the uh, <clears throat> Harbor District wants to, you know, increase, you know, uh, I, the last um, meeting, I mentioned an example down in Pescadero, you can go down, people can go down there. There's areas where there's a uh, little small retail, they're just, they're just shed, small, low impact sheds um, spaced out uh, appropriately. But, um, you know, I like this idea. I've, I've told, uh, um, I, I, I've mentioned it in, in, in the past that uh, I think it's low, but, um, you know, looking at this, uh, the side view, I'm, 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 I'm very keen with style and what, and I know this was probably just a, uh, a CAD drawing, um, but, um, you know, um, I think that there could be, you know, I, just kind of representing an outline and and a and a, and a canopy, but uh, um, there could, you know, uh, finishing touches is is what it's all about, so that it uh, kind of really kind of really best blends in. We, of course, I don't want to suggest raising um, costs, but. Uh, you know, sometimes maybe instead of the fence, it could be uh, some some hedges or I don't know. But uh, um, I, I can't say that this particular drawing I'm super excited about. Uh, but I think that the general idea of a low impact um, usable space in this area is is certainly um, positive in, in my in my mind. Um, um, yeah, just just looking a little bit more for an eye of style, and uh, 
um, that it's appropriate, that it kind of blends in with the character. That's that's all. But overall, I think it's a great idea, and I support for 100. percent Okay, so um, for public, uh, I'd like to have public comment before we, as a council, decide what to do. Lenny, you uh, had your hand raised for public comment. Yes. Hi, um, Meredith. Um, Hi, everybody. That that really looks nice. I like that. I just wanted to get a public comment in here and say that I would support that. It's going to be um, a mixture of, of um, non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. Yes. Kind of like a neutral thing. It's not going to be like a a bar thing. No, it, it's definitely. I, I call it a, a hangout. Um, uh -huh. But that's. Yeah, I'm going to have about 30 to 40 varieties of, of cider, both nice. non-alcoholic and alcoholic, nice. um, and really lean into the gluten-free aspect of it all. Um, mm. So I'm going to have little prepackaged snacks, too, like nuts or fruit or whatever. Um, and the, the only two, because it's a bar, um, that means 21 and up. That means minimal food. So the two items I'm going to have are soft pretzels, um, and I'm going to have uh, s'mores kits. So I, I want to encourage people to, like I said, go go get some takeout from Catch Joanne's, or you know, go get some ice cream or whatever, and then come. Um, I'm going to have tastings, cider tastings, um, and you know, I hope that you'll come have some s'mores by the fire and watch the boats all day long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really a good idea. I I just wanted to. Um, get you know a positive um comment in there and you probably you probably won't need story polls or anything like that because it's something that um <clears throat> just you may not need it but you know oh i'm gonna steal a minute here and go to james just for a second can you put story polls up to the restroom oh on the <laughs> for the restroom okay let's go back to to meredith <laughs> I have to steal that that minute because I got cut off, but I really do um, do like it. And thank you very much. Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, Scott. I'm sorry you had a council comment and I missed you. That's okay. I, I probably came late. Um, my my comment is I think it's awesome. It should be great. I, it's a really great idea. I can't wait to go there. <laughs> my question, though, that does not have to be answered now is. How many of these are okay? So I can't I mean, answer that. I'm the first. No, no, <laughs> not, not you. But in general, how many are? Is it okay if we have twenty of these there, um, all over the place? Is is just one all we're gonna have? So in the future, this might be a great idea, and everyone loves it. Soon as it's a good idea is out there, everybody wants to do it. Also, there will be other entrepreneurs. So again what's how many is okay is a question I would have for the future for the council. That's a good question. Okay. Uh, Sid Young, you had a, a public comment question. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, Meredith, this sounds really exciting. And I was glad to hear that you offer other things besides just alcoholic cider. Oh yeah. Drink. But um, I also was wondering and this is my concern for you, you're not going to be there monitoring it 24 seven. Are you worried about vandals in the evening or, you know? Yeah, there's, the you know, there's, there's, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I, this is definitely something that we, you know, we've been discussing uh, for a very long time since the beginning. And, you know, what can I do to, you know, have some cameras or, or, you know, chain, chain some of the furniture together, um, talk to the, the Harbor master and their staff, um, about security, but yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot I can do and there's a lot I can't do. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to cross all of those bridges when I get set up. Well, that's your risk. I'm I'm yes. happy for a place to hang out. I just worry what kind of people will be hanging out there when you're not around to police yeah. the operation. Sure. So I it mean, might it, cause you concern. problems. It's a concern that is absolutely something that we're we're thinking about and working on. Okay. 
Thank you. Add, add the, the kayak company has uh, benches out there and I, I don't, I've been, I've been in and out of there for years and never saw a problem. You know, I mean, if there's a, a wooden bench or something that's, you know, the, I haven't seen anything removed. I'll just, I'll just add that. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a comment. I, uh, I appreciate that, uh, there's support for this from the Harbor district and from, a, um, a lot of members of the public. Um, but I do recall, and, and many of you probably not involved in the Sam board meetings about a year ago, maybe a year and a half, there was considerable concern and about a million dollars spent with, uh, upsets at the sewer plant due to discharges. Um, and I won't make any allegations, but, uh, Let's just say that the sewer plant spent a fair amount of money and instituted a new program to try and control um, discharges that could upset the sewer plant. I don't know, but I'm guessing that that might be part of why GCSD is concerned here. And so before I'd reach any conclusion, I would want to find out why it is GSD, GCSD is asking for this. I could guess... But, but Greg, I'm not, can I can I interrupt? GCSD yeah. is not asking it's not. For this. Sam is not asking for this. The health department's asking for it. Who's asking for the sewer? So is the okay, health it's, department. it's actually the land environmental health services land use and water department, and it's only because it is within California code that um, any any place like this, like a bar, um, would have to have connection to water and sewer. That it's just a general in California code. So when, you know, we shaped the business like a no permanent structure, temporary kind of pop-up with a trailer that is to California code and has been signed off on because it's being custom built um, with the, you know, it, the tank, the extra tanks for, for potable water and for gray water. So, so all of that is contained in that we, we thought that we could then, you know, simply have, uh, you know, an entity like the porta potty maintenance people come and, and just suck out any gray water um, directly from the trailer. So it, it, it is basically just something that they, the land use and water supervisor saying it's, it's within California code that you have to do it, but, but he's also understanding that it's not really logical or really that applicable in this case. So that's been, um, you know, 15 months now of, uh, trying to, to figure things out with that okay. and they well, are part my, of it. My, my, my position is I want to hear from the horses that are doing that talking before I reach any conclusion on this. I, I don't understand it. Um, and I don't know what uh, fire and CCWD have said either. So I'm, I'm viewing myself as potentially uninformed. We have a proposed letter that Dave has written to support this. And so my question for the council is, does the council feel that they want to vote on this letter tonight uh, expressing support for the project. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I would. I'd vote on it, supporting it. Have we seen the draft? So did I miss the draft? Do you want me yeah, to put the draft it up? is posted? We could put it up. Dave could put it up. I missed it. The presentation draft? You mean like the mock up? No, the, the letter. Dave, the letter. Dave, Dave oh, draft oh, oh. The Ah. Here it is. Sorry. So I, I'm sensitive to Scott's comment also about how much is enough. Thank you. Very insightful comment. You know, on that, you know, really, you're, you're limited to real estate. There's, you know, there's not a lot of places. <laughs> you don't have, I don't think you have to worry about that expanding. There's just not a lot of places. Um, the Harbor District has uh, <clears throat> allowed for the suggestion for this one particular spot. There's, you know, I mean, you, if, if anybody's familiar with the area, <laughs> they know there's 
not a lot of other spaces. It might be, might be the last space. Yeah. So I'm not uh, concerned about that issue, Scott. Um, okay, I think, so it'd be, I think it'd be good to, to have, so I, mean, I would wanna understand like what, like what's the algorithm for determining whether you put another, like I think it's, it seems clear there's space for this one, but I think it's actually a very interesting point. Like how do you decide whether you're going to put another one in there, like what what factors into that? Who decides? Yeah. And I mean, the, 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 the land the oh, the landowners decide um, because I when I started going down this road, I did look for brick and mortar places. I looked to go into Harbor Village. I looked at you know all over up and down the coast. I actually looked. Um, so when I when I landed on the piece of property that was a vacant property in El Granada next to the post office, I learned that it was owned by the Harbor District. I I learned I knew that a lot of people wanted that land, and so I basically said. What if I created some sort of very simple, I'm just going to park a trailer and put out some furniture? What if I could leave at, very quickly if somebody wanted to develop it? So uh, that's how it was shaped um, when I was not able to get that space for a lot of other reasons. The Harbor District said, well, here's Upper Perch Beach is this area, this small area that we don't want any development the Coastal Commission doesn't want any permanent structure or any non-permeable, um, you know, surface there um, at the waterfront. So that's that's how this this was shaped. But but yeah, the the land owned by the Harbor District um, is who you know I've I've been working with from day one to to try to be there. Uh, Kimberly Williams. Uh, you you have a comment. I I must have missed you. Um. Thanks, Greg. I do just have something quick. Um. I mean, it, just to remind folks. And by the way, Meredith, I think it's, it sounds wonderful. Um. Just to remind folks that this the the permit is not into perpetuity. It does come up for review and renewal, and that's the case with H and B kayak as well. And so, if someone is not a good steward or a good tenant, then their their permit may not be re renewed. For so sure. that's something to keep in keep in mind. Thank you. You know how often? What's what's the time frame for that? What's the re renewal period? Well, for I I have a three year lease agreement right now with the Harbor District. Oh. And yeah, and to add to Gus and Scott's concerns, um, you know, even if there were if they were to be able to squeeze some other small space, it's um it's it's start of a model of, of a low impact, you know. I mean, we don't want a, a large view blocking building anywhere. This is a model of a low impact uh minimal view blocking um, uh, establishment. And um, I would favor uh, uh, more of more of them to some degree um, if it was appropriate, but uh, but but the, the, the key the key thing here is that it's low impact. It's not a giant building that's going to block views. Um, and I guess the market, you know, the the market, you know, uh, would really kind of also play a, a factor as to, you know, what could lead to another one of these, you know, um, well, of course, landowners, uh, you know, coastal commission, everything. Uh, but I don't see it going out of control. That's for certain. You know, I don't, I don't see it. I see it as right. a, an appropriate fit for a spot that is kind of not being used right now. So the question is, do we have a motion to approve that letter? That, Dave, did you show the letter? Uh, yes, I, I believe I did. Uh, do you want me to show it again? I, I'm afraid I don't see it. Yes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it. Hold on, let me see what happened. Are you seeing it now? Okay. Yes. Um, sorry about that. Mm 
Motion to approve the letter. Second. Uh, I will add something that, uh, you know, hopefully the, the ADA improvements, the, the pads, a lot of times they have to add a, a bumpy pad that it could be uh, not the obnoxious yellow, but um, gray in color matching uh, what El Granada is using now. Yeah, I'm so 100% with you. <laughs> so, so we have a motion and a second. Should I take roll? Yeah, you should call the roll. Unless right. Claire, there's some procedural. Claire, is there some procedural thing I'm missing here? She's muted. You're on mute. You're still muted. Mute. You should ask if there's any discussion. Okay. Is there any further discussion from the council? Or from the or from the public? Well, we just had public comment. Yeah, but we didn't have a motion on the floor yet. Okay, so now that we have a motion, is there any additional public comment? Hearing none. Greg? Um, go, ahead, go ahead and call the roll. Okay, Greg? I'm going to vote no because I want to hear more about the rest of the permitting issues that I don't understand. Claire? I'm going to vote no for the same reason. Dan? Yes. I'm voting yes. Gus? Yes. So we're motion three, passes. three to two passes. Motion passes. Okay. So uh, assuming day that letter is ready to go, we'll send it out. And I'm more than happy to, you know, set up any meetings or, or have any off offline conversations with absolutely anyone to tell you, tell you my tale and answer for any questions. You know, I don't oh, you've think been very responsive. I don't think it's you. That, that's that's leaving us. <laughs> it's more the county, right? There's some and, something. And this strange. will be interesting. This really is the first time the county has ever permitted this business. They actually started violation proceedings against several of the other examples that we found. So they're yeah. going through similar processes. All right. Thank you for your time. I'd like to move on because we are forty-five minutes late. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you yeah. for your time. Thank you all. So the Brown Act in-person attendance, uh, I don't recall Ray saying in public what he told me earlier before the meeting, but there's going to be a letter written to try and motivate some action to cope with the objections raised about in-person attendance for council members that have immunocompromised family members. Um, I will tell you that I took that draft letter that I had posted last week and did send it to Ray and the county council. Um, I have not gone further. What I would ask the council is, would you be in favor of me drafting a slightly revised version of that to send to governors Governor Brown, Senator Becker, and Senator Berman, or um, or is there no interest in, in doing so? Any comments from the council on that? I mean, go for it if you want. I, go for it, and I'm happy to support it. I just don't think it's going to work. I, I think you should also. Um, okay. It, yeah. All right. Well, I stopped the Vietnam War, so I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, I think you should, Greg. I think that uh, there's a lot more um, people across the state in in the councils and everybody that's affected by the Brown Act. That... Yeah, I heard the same thing when I spoke on this issue with Sam. Everybody said, "Oh, let's let's oppose it," but I haven't seen the action. Barbara, did you want to make a comment there? Barbara Matthewson. Just that our governor is still Newsom. I was going to say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. That's all I want to say on that. We'll wait and see what Ray does. Castle activity, correspondence, and meetings attended. Uh, who wants to report on some aspect of their activity relevant uh, today and possibly for future agenda discussion? 
Scott and I did a hike up that fire road area, and uh, somehow I missed in the um, in Hannah's presentation that the fire road they're building is sort of already on top of an old fire road. Somehow I missed that little detail, um, and so I have even fewer concerns about the fire road than I used to, since there's already like a I mean, there's already a road there. Um, so it's not like we're, they're going to plow down a bunch of sort of virgin area. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Is I, Dan and I still need to connect on on which is my fault because I've been swapped with work, but to connect on putting together a letter about the fire road. But um, I just wanted to say that I did, I missed that and uh, it's made me less less worried about it than I was before. The lower well, there's one other, council, one other council member activity that you were involved in. You drafted a letter about Parks and Sequa that I saw about 15 minutes before the meeting started. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so the question I have is, do you want to show your letter? Sure. And does the council care to schedule it for future agenda? Um, I will uh, see if I can make you co so you can share the screen. Sure. What? I think we would have to submit it like tomorrow, don't we? Isn't their comment period closed tomorrow? Well, yes, that's true. It will be too late, but it I don't think it hurts if you know if we're going to be in general supporting it. Um Let's see. I, I made you co-host if you want to share okay. it. Trying. There is see that. It's it's a super short letter because it's just addressing the narrow issue, but which I literally said there, the narrow issue of do we think the CEQA analysis was a competent CEQA analysis? It doesn't. We're not taking a position on any of the individual projects, including the fire road. Okay. So um my question for the council is, do you want this agenda, this letter agendized for publication at a future meeting? Uh, Dan, are you um, going to speak to this? Yeah, let me think. Or, um, you know, I wanted to give a council um, activity. Um, okay, we'll get to that. All right, so, so here's where we are on this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Greg. Slow down a little bit. On this note, um, I, I'm just looking at it now. Give me a little time, um, maybe. Okay. Sid, you had a public comment on a council uh, question. Member just a quick question. I thought there was a, a neighbor in the East Miramar neighborhood that was worried about runoff from this newly uh, upgraded fire road. Um, is there not going to be any mention of that in this letter? Um, is this? I mean, wouldn't wouldn't that go in the letter we're going to do about the fire road? Oh, okay. What is this letter again? I'm sorry. This is this is just for the sequel. Yeah, did they did, okay, did they adequately check the box on sequel? That's all this is. All right. And, right. and the the sequel statements do say they consider stormwater runoff in their analysis. All right. I don't know if they did. That's all. They've been dodging that issue for a while. Thank you. Um. You know, right, Gus well, and I took a look at exactly how the runoff from this fire road is going to go it, where it goes where, ex, where where what its path is and where it ends up we looked at that together um but i i, I can't comment because i don't i don't know enough about sequa to make a you know a a, a legitimate comment on that so yeah you're and satisfied, I'm with you. right and you're the neighbor uh, Aren't, said, we're, sorry not time for public comment um so I also went up there with you, Scott, and, and I feel we're a day late on this and there's no material objection from the council on their CEQA processing. So I'm happy with not sending any letter at all. Um, but I mean, if the council wanted to, I'm, I'm willing to consider it. I just don't hear any overwhelming uh, urgency to do it. Just figured we had right. at least draft something since they they did technically push their deadline back so that we would have the opportunity to do so if we wanted to. So right, right, they did. Throw something out there. And I, I talked. That's fine. I, 
I talked to Nicholas today, and he didn't seem to have a problem with us not issuing a letter. So, I mean, I, awesome. I'm, I'm going to let it sit. Um, Sounds good. Dan, you want to report on council member activity? Let's go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I touched uh, on Ray's uh, report a little bit about um, looking around at the trees and in, 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 in our whole community. And I just wanted to... Uh, so I want to let everybody in the council know that uh, I did, you know, really kind of uh, go around. I looked at a lot of the, um, you know, went up, climbed up into the medians and climbed over tree trunks and and I, and I saw a lot of rotten wood in some of these trunks. You know, signs of uh, bug infestation. You know, whatever term. I'm not an expert. I am not a tree expert, but uh, you know. Um, Clearly, uh, some of the trees uh, failed because of weakened, you know, fiber and the and the and the, the strength of the of the trunk um, broken down from whether it's rot or or bug infestations, this and that. Um, and I also looked at uh, some of the root, um, the roots from. You know these 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 uh, trees that fell down. The roots are all exposed, and clearly there's indication of uh, some of the roots are just like rotted, and they're not even you know you know uh, there's no strength left. Um, so obviously, with the high winds, you know uh, the weight of the tree and the force of the wind, you know the wind. The wind uh, wins the the battle, um, and you know from that from from driving around, you know, I, <laughs> there's so many trees in our area that fell. Um, you know, from that, I just I thought that it was a very good uh, idea that the uh, county arborist comes out and and takes a good assessment of uh, you know. Again, I'll say I, I love trees. I don't want trees to be removed, but if if you know there's there's one just not too far from my house, I mean it's leaning at a 22 degree angle. It's it's leaning strong, still standing, but it's leaning pretty bad. And uh, you can also see some of the trees. You look in, and there's a whole it's just a whole rotten um, kind of hole um, that's visible from the street. And for these reasons, I thought, you know, definitely would be appropriate to really put pressure on the county to come out and have the uh, arborist and kind of not only take an assessment and look at the trunks that are laying on the ground and the roots that are exposed, but um, to get it, you know, just basically to do a community, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, a. Assessment. Uh, Assessment, but also a a, a um, I'm thinking favor, but there's a better word. Uh, just a, a community, you know, something to 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 help the community, the whole community, to give um, some kind of ideas on you know what to look for. I saw some trees down in Quarry Park, a lot of woodpecker uh, holes, you know, and so the woodpecker holes means that there's bugs inside, and that's whatever kind of signal. Your, they could give to your average homeowner to say, hey, look out for this, don't do that, and this kind of stuff to uh, keep our trees healthy so they don't blow down on the wind. So what I what I heard as an action item was that Ray is going to get back to us about the county arborist. I also am aware, and I went to Lenny's place, and she walked my dog and I around, and we looked probably the same things you did about the trees that had fallen and the lack of roots. Um, so I agree that a community assessment by the arborist makes sense. There's also the question of the El Granada medians and who's responsible for those. And I think that's worth pressuring the county, county on. The county is. Well, that's a legal matter subject to debate at present. Uh, so I get your point. Um, I did want to report on some uh, council member activity um, and probably nobody's left on the meeting, but I did receive a response from the California Highway Patrol about the traffic on Sunshine Valley Road. They said they're going to increase spot enforcement. I posted that 
on the blog post for this agenda under item five. Um, that's not the only open issue, reg issue regarding traffic, but I want to make sure you knew that was done. Um, I also had a dialogue with Parks and some of the members of the Wildfire Warriors who had concerns about the swath of trees next to El Granada Boulevard. Some back and forth, but I can tell you that Parks has acknowledged their concern about that stretch of trees. And they're saying that because the CEQA document, when it's accepted, will allow them to now begin a project to address that. So there's there's some skepticism in the community about getting it done, but uh, what I'm told is it's on their radar and they can get to, to it once the CEQA document's approved. And then I'm also pursuing some research uh, regarding FEMA money and the local hazard mitigation plan with the county. And I might have something more to say on the whole issue of the funding for coastside infrastructure, both because of the session that Ray is holding on February 2nd, I believe it is, and because of what I'm gonna find out uh, from the county about FEMA money. Uh, so I, I'm gonna suggest that uh, we turn our attention to future agendas and I'm gonna suggest- oh, that oh, 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 oh. Uh, One other thing. That's council member activity. That's council yeah. member activity I reported. Okay. Yeah, let me, can I speak please? Yeah, well you already did speak on council member activity. I wanna speak again, please. It's gonna be Go short. Go for it, Dan. Okay, so um, on the light at Coronado and Highway 1, okay, um, before they did the work with the trail connection, that island that they put on Coronado, before they did that, uh, early in the morning, the light was always green, always green, unless there was a car that pulled out from Coronado and wanted to make a left. If that happened, the Highway 1 light would turn red for just a moment until the bumper of the car making the left turn passed, and then it would it would turn green again, okay? For the past, ever since they did the island, as far as I know, um, this morning I timed it, the light on Highway 1 is green for about 20 seconds, and then it's red, for 30 seconds, and then it's green for 20 seconds. It's it's favoring Coronado for some reason. Um, it's causing um, I don't want to say I don't know when it changes, but you know there are the thing, and I think that we should invite sometime uh, Caltrans to come out and explain to us how these streetlights are programmed. Um, the light at uh, Capistrano. The same thing. It's usually predominantly green for Highway 1 unless somebody is coming out from Capistrano. It picks up the signal that there's a car there. It'll turn green for Capistrano just for enough time for that car to get out. And then it goes green again for um, for the highway. So um, this is early morning stuff. Um, I, I can't really comment on uh, midday, but... Uh, Clearly, the uh, the traffic light at Coronado and Highway One is is just it's not functioning like it used to. Okay, so to make this actionable, who's responsible for that light? Is it Caltrans or DP? Yes, it's Caltrans. It's on Highway One. Okay. It's a California highway. So, Caltrans. So yes. then, what I would suggest, what I would suggest, uh, let me, is, hold, on, hold on, hold on, let me give you a little insight. Fill out a ticket and report it to Caltrans using their website. I'll send you the link. Yeah, good luck. They answered the links that I posted. They went ahead and cleared away some eucalyptus at Frenchman's Creek and uh, Medio. They didn't got, fix everything I posted, but they did. You got, some pull. You got some pull then. So um, nah, you know, let them, let them know just, about the light at Coronado and maybe they'll fix it. I'm, I'm asking you to file the report. You're the one that observed it. Every I time I did, I don't get, I get crickets. I, I don't know what you filed would, before. Would, will you send me the link? I, I'd love to file that because I live right over there. I'll do All it. Right, Gus? Good. All right. Um, future agendas. Do we have nominations?
Sid? I attended the CKEG stormwater committee meeting this past week or so, and um, they mentioned uh, Prop 68, which is funding for uh, stormwater in parks, et cetera. So I would like to see it on the agenda to get Ann Stillman or somebody over. Obviously, you know, they didn't want to pass it as part of the Quarry Park uh master plan but i did follow the the water flowing out of uh quarry park they diverted some of it away from santa maria even though you know fran and bert burnett solario were you know very vocal to try to get it mitigated and held in within the park but um now it's flowing out onto Murata surf east and it's flowing all the way down the hill and running over the uh the new four million dollar coastal path so um i think it was in 2018 the state started giving out money i don't know if it's too late i didn't call up the california water resources board but um i think we should have stormwater mitigation on the coast side on our future agenda and specifically to start with maybe the runoff at um, Quarry Park being diverted to Murata Surf East, which is now flooding the new coastal bicycle multimodal trail. Thank you. Sid, can you share any links or information about the meeting you attended? <laughs> CKEG Stormwater Committee meeting. It was a week ago. They yeah, have it every see. month. What do you want? Can a you link. A link to something that shows the agenda or materials presented. I sent that um, to you last week. You want it again? I did send well, it I must to you. Have listed. Yeah. Because okay, well, I, I thought you were going to. You asked me to post it in the chat last week, too, which I did. Uh, I will well, send it again. Will uh, speaking of, what, one quick thing. Speaking of chat, I. Uh, Try, I used to be able to copy and paste the chat to a Word document so I could save it, but I think that's been disabled. Does anyone know anything about it? I don't know. We're going to, we have the chat saved and we can pass it out. Okay. I used to be able to save it myself personally, because, you know, for my own records, you but all right. You, Thanks. You, you I look forward to seeing that on the MCC website. Thank you. You click the three dots in the chat thing and say save chat. And that usually works. Burnett, you wanted to comment? Yeah, I just wanted to support Sid in those comments. That there's, there definitely needs to be something done about the runoff from Quarry Park. I sent you my comments that you requested, Greg, yes. and uh, identified a, a couple of projects, one of which addressed part of the issue. They addressed it from Alhambra, I mean, from the Alameda down to Alhambra, but they didn't address it from the park down to the Alameda. And then they have another project in place on Ferdinand that doesn't seem to be really necessary and uh, made the comment that uh, it seems to be that the MCC should be having more of an input as to what type of storm drainage projects are going on in El Granada and not necessarily the county just picking and choosing because why you're picking Ferdinand, it has hardly any runoff when you see the runoff from the pictures and videos that are sent that's coming down Santa Maria makes no sense to me at all. Thank you. Well, by remarkable coincidence, the first item listed under future agendas is stormwater and sewer solutions. So I believe we will schedule that for the next meeting. Are there any other suggestions or are people feeling like it's time for a motion to adjourn? So Greg, I, um, there is one thing, I'm, I'm just not prepared, I'm not ready yet. I don't think it's that urgent, but um, I need to go around and take uh, pictures of uh, some of the most recent, which were about 15 years ago, uh, recent, substantial concrete sidewalk projects in El Granada to show and give the example of, uh, you know, the, the beige color of concrete. Um, and also at the same time, I put together some pictures of uh, different uh, where they added the uh, um, ADA pads and whether they matched the concrete or they did not match the concrete. But um, I think from the community, the, you know, uh, kind of a, a more consistent um, and have not, not having all these unmatching situations. Um, so the, the DPW wants uh, a letter from the council 
with kind of a, uh, um, you know, a, a, uh, a picked color for the concrete that they put in the future. And I think that, uh, I'll show some pictures of the, of the two most recent large scale concrete sidewalk jobs and the color of those concrete, uh, the color of those sidewalks. Um, and we'll try to get, a a letter together to, uh, uh, forward to DPW to say, you know, this should be the standard for uh, El Granada, uh, mid coast. Okay. I'm still waiting. Yeah, I'll just need a little time on that. It's uh, no, I mean, I'm waiting for a motion to adjourn. Yeah, so moved. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> we'll have a second. I second that. All right. Um, any discussion? Right. Oh, sorry. Well, I was going to ask for discussion, but yes, I vote to adjourn. Uh, Claire? Yes. Dan? Yes. Me and Gus? Yes. All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night, everybody.